match because they keep changing the fucking goalposts. We're done with those little bastards. And then they go, could you send us the work from last year on an external hard drive so we could send it to the new agency? Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, I'm sure they did illegally, but whatever. And then the other day, it's like, oh, uh, never mind. Could you do the last four years instead? I'm like, you motherfuckers. You're going to be paying for every hour. I got to scrub through four years of data. Sure. Absolutely. And, oh, by the way, I can't touch it until March. See ya. Mm. I can't get rid of them. Thanks, man. You're welcome, man. Shit. What do I look forward to this year? Hmm. Being vaccinated by fall? Fuck yeah. All right. I'd like to be able to see the inside of a game store. Well, I just can do uh, that now. No. With within with certain. I I could just come in here and we can actually play. Yeah. Still doing these? Yeah, if you wanna. Okay. I got steam running out. I just do it so that I can hear the, how we're sounding. Gotcha. I do have a new Mac laptop. It's got 32 gigs of RAM. It's running steam real nice. So. Are you hearing anything out of the out of both ears? Nope, right. Pesky loose connection on the scooter again? Hold on. Remember if you... No. We had it work last time. That's fine. There needs to be one. Well, what'd you do? You touched the cord. That's a good question. What did I do? <laughs> bada, bada, bop, bada. Right. Testing 101. Just keep doing oh, a bunch you of know. stuff until you can replicate the problem. Yeah, like that. You gotta lose the 3.5 millimeter thing is probably there. You go. The connection's not hard enough. Yeah. What if you? Uh, oh no, you're right. <laughs> Don't make me get some scotch tape. I'd be like, <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. All right. That it's not the right mouse. <laughs> I so love that game. Clankers? You, like Clank. you love Clank. Clank. I've never played it. That's not what I want. Have you ever played that one? There we go. Game. All right, we'll just let that go there and be done with that. All right. I just got to do one thing and then we will get going. Let's go to our... New save as episode 50. We'll just call it that for the time being. Save that. Track. Add new. Stereo track. Bring it up to right here. Stereo? You should go mono. No, thank you. All right. We ready? You should go old school. All right. Time to do this. They can hear us, I think. <laughs> I think I hit the wrong button and I turned our mics on early. Hey, hey, welcome. <laughs> Who's going to hear us, though? Let's see. Really welcome to You Got all Me Monologuing. Of myself. Who is going to hear us? It's a, the funny thing is, well, first of all, welcome to You Got Me Monologuing. It's our Wednesday Night Live monologue. I'm Tony. I'm Pasqual. I'm Grognard Todd. And he's Grognard Todd. <laughs> so the funny thing is, 
I don't see new people joining our streams on any one of the three that we do. However, after every stream, we seem to add one or new two, two new people. So welcome to the so new people. So they're interested after the fact? Come on, people. <laughs> Join us live. You- I guarantee you interaction. Are we better live? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be hilarious if like we just start showing up at uh, Grognards and like we're just like hanging around, and we just start podcasting just gorilla, around the register. Gorilla Pod, man. Yeah, yeah we're the Gorilla Pod crew. Yeah, that's right. We could, I could do that. I'm down with that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Howie's just ringing the register. Like, what the hell What's are these three on? doing? Oh, well, that that would require Howie to come into the store well, every now and again. Hey, 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 hey! Love you, I miss Howie. you, Howie. I'm here defending you. Yeah. Hey, Your I brother, do. on the other hand. That's right. He he has to love him. I just uh, I I love him because he's Howie. I can't get rid of him. So I mean, it, it's a moral imperative to pick on your brother. No, I've I've got a brother just like that. Then I feel the exact same way. Hmm. If he were anybody else in the world, I'll take you, Howie <laughs> over your brother. <laughs> Howie's at least fun. And <laughs> and my brother, my brother's a fun drunk. I will tell you that. Oh, he he's, he's, he's one of the uh, outgoing drunks. Oh my god! I think I actually am one of the more outgoing drunks, but I I plateau after buzz, then after that I lose energy. Yeah, my brother, my brother, he loves to drunk dial people. Oh gosh! One of the funniest drunk dials he ever did. Not like a butt dial. He actually calls people. Oh yeah, drunk. he's called me at at like one o'clock in the morning. Hey, how you doing, man? So I was thinking I had to call you because I was thinking about. You remember that time that convention we went to? <laughs> that was great. Yeah, that was that was great. He does that. He, I, he I, is that. I had friends who were the out. emotional type drunk. They were like, they'll piss you off in life, and then what they'll do is when they get drunk, they'll call you up. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, my life is doing so bad. I'm sorry I treated you so poorly. And they're like, you know, being all like personable and right and like emotional. It's like, man, I love you, man. And then like when they sober up again, it's like, <laughs> back to asshole. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> One of the, you know, my, my, my brother loves to drunk dial family, but the funniest one was the night he drunk dialed Tony Todd. Oh, no. <laughs> Candyman. Candyman. He, we got it. We've got his email and Andy got his, his phone number at a horror show we had done. Um, I think I've heard that story. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was, it was a fun night. It was, yeah. it, it was fun for him. I was pissed off with him on Sunday morning, but <laughs> so he, he's got Tony Todd's phone number. And one night he just decides to drunk dial Tony Todd. And Tony was gracious and talked to him for like 20 minutes. Oh, wow. yeah, I remember. That's the last guy you want to mess with, though. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, he's done. He does all the fucked up, you know, Final Destination, Candyman. He was he was uh, Worf's brother on Deep Space Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in Platoon. Yep. Yeah. And you're going to go fucking with that, man. I want to drunk dial Keanu Reeves. <laughs> That would, I think that would be fun. That would be hilarious. He'd be he'd be polite at least. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. He, you know, what's funny is when we were coming up, and he was, you know, he was a young actor. Think about how terrible everybody said that he was. He was a horrible actor. You know, you right. think now we love we love Bill and Ted, and we love Point Break, and we love. Well, I think he's got incredible range. Like lately, the roles that he picks, and he's been directing. He directed that one um, martial arts movie. Uh, I can't think of it right now, but like it's cinematically like fantastic. Right. Uh, he goes from I think what happened was the Matrix allowed him to uh, branch off and do different things. Oh, it gave him he did so much that freedom. Keanu movie where he played the voice of the cat. Right. Like he, he ranges that to um, rom coms to the John Wick. You know, now yeah. he's just doing whatever he wants to do. Cyberpunk. Yeah, Cyberpunk. Bill and Ted Three was awesome. I thought that was the highlight of my year last year. And the most important movies. thing is that he always employs the hover hand. Yes. Yeah. The that's, hover hand. That that trips me out. He, that's why like, the women like him. It's like it's okay, the hover hand. he's not he's not gropey. Right. He does he's not that. Grabby Grabberson. And right. he always takes care of his stuntmen. Right. I, uh, I think I respect that more. You know the, the right. way he is in real life more than his yeah. acting because let's face it, his acting. I still remember him playing Lord Lackbeard in uh, Much Ado About Nothing. Oh yeah, uh, with oh, Brian yes. Blessed. Mm-hmm. And he he was in a cast where Boss where he was so overmatched by the actors around him. Yeah, but he you know, tried. And and the greatest thing about that movie was Michael Keaton in that role. He he was brilliant in that. Mm-hmm. But um, my my favorite uh, category is over over act over acting and over matched by an, other actors is is Dracula. Oh yes. You know, oh Gary Oldman. Yeah. Anthony Hopkins and Gary. Oldman. 
<laughs> I, I mean, yeah, yeah. That's he, just... he, uh, he he was not good in that movie. <laughs> Some argue that that movie was bad. I think overall that movie was good. But, but he, is he that bad. really his it was a horrible movie? movie. It was though. Not a very no, it was not, and it was not a good uh, script either. But yeah, you know, I, I mean, it, it was, was a beautiful was a looking movie, film, though. But it was it was good. That was that who uh, who directed that? Was that Luke? But no. That wasn't Luke Besson, was it? Uh, uh, I actually have the DVD at home because I bought it in a bargain bin. It's, oh my gosh. I, I'm looking it up right now. It's Stra- Bram Sto- Francis Ford Coppola. It's use, a Coppola film. That's the, why it looks use beautiful. Use the internet. Yeah, Francis Ford Coppola. Jesus. And, and you also have Wynonna Router and Anthony Hopkins. I mean, right. to be fair, you're casting in 92 uh, a Keanu Reeves who probably just hit Point Break and Bill and Ted. Well, uh, Bill and Ted was 88 and 91. Yep. So, yeah, he's fresh off of that. He's fresh off of that. Like, he doesn't have... I mean, he's got some great films under his belt, yeah. but, like, well, you're going against Anthony Hopkins and Gary Oldman. Right. That, that's that's already but it, a it, tough well, call. It, it, and it's also one like, of those movies where Dracula, like, the antagonist is the lead. It's like Darth Vader and, no offense to Mark Hamill, but Mark Hamill's acting chops came after <laughs> Star Wars. How dare you? <laughs> we still uh, love Corvette look, Summer, nineteen seventy seven. That is the epitome. That's the height of cinema, sir. But but yo, know, to yes. be fair, you know, the, I love early performances where they're not the best. But that's, uh, I, mean, I mean, exactly. I, Barry Bostwick and Susan Sarandon in Rocky Horror Picture Show. I mean, come on. No, granted, yeah. Tim Curry carries that uh, that film absolutely. Exactly. 100%. But everybody, right. like, overshoots Barry Boswick, and then you see him in Spin City years later. Oh, yeah. Well, no, he he, he went from Rocky Horror Picture Show to uh, Megaforce. Wasn't, wasn't that him as Gosh, well? I don't even remember. Megaforce. Megaforce. That, I, I want to say about he referenced was... referenced me. I want to say he did one of those Mad Max. Oh, yeah. A mega, Megaforce of Michael Beck. I I'm just looking it up now. Delta Force. I remember Delta Force. <laughs> no, Chuck Norris. No, yeah. Mega Force was one of those. Uh, it was a, a Mad Max knockoff, a dystopian future. Like Damnation Alley or something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I remember. With I know Barry Bostwick did Persis one of those. Kambata. So he was not. Okay, so now I've got to look this up. Uh, IMDb. Yeah, I've never actually heard of this film. I this saw it in the theater. Ace Hunter. It, wow. th- this is like a third grade writing project. Right. Here's the storyline for you, Todd. Ace Hunter is the leader of the Megaforce, an elite group of American soldiers who travel the world to fight evil. In this case, evil with a capital E is represented by a third-rate dictator who them is blown to bits. Sounds good. That, the, the, that is a third grader writing a book. Here's three million dollars. Go make that movie. Yeah, it, it's um, it's like uh, if Buckaroo Banzai was written by a third grader. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, hang on. I, oh, yeah, Megaforce. Megaforce. Yep. Huh. That is him. Awesome. Yeah, no, you weren't good, man. I, I'm shocked that you pulled that. That is a that is a deep cut right there. That is a yeah, all of the that is a deep cut. I mean, the rest of the cast you've got uh, it's Barry Bostwick, and then the rest of the cast on IMDb. The I don't know who Michael Beck, Persis Kambata, Edward Mulher, George Firth. Like who? What? Mm-hmm, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, funny. Yeah. Okay, I did pull that one right. Right. Yeah. Nineteen eighty-two. Right. Oh, I pulled it out of my head. <laughs> yeah. uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Well, Way remember, to you, you, you got to remember, 1980 to 1984, I lived on a military base in Germany that had one movie theater that showed English movies. When you, And we had one television channel that showed shows in English. And they I'm were surprised always, it wasn't the scrambled porn channel. Right. And it was, well, no, you could, no, you got porn on the regular German channels. You just couldn't understand what they were saying. German broadcast television, they can That's show, true. They that can is show true. boobs. We're, we're we're the prudes. We're the prudes. We are, which is so weird. Really? You know, of all the oh, countries to not. be as prudish as we are. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, that's why I saw Empire Strikes Back twenty eight times in the movie theater. Mm. Twenty five of them were because I hated my babysitter. <laughs> there was nothing else to do. I would every day. I would get fifty I... cents from my parents. I'd find it, beg, borrow, steal. I'd get fifty cents. I'd leave school, I'd go to the babysitters, I'd drop off my book bag at the babysitters, and I walked across the street, Uh, it was maybe a half mile down the road was the movie theater, it was 50 cents to get in for a kid, I'd drop my 50 cents in, and for five weeks straight, the matinee (laughs) showing was Empire Strikes Back. I could not stand, 
The so babysitter funny. put her kid who was two years younger than me in charge of me one day. And he, you know, being a you know eight-year-old kid, mm-hmm. well, I'm your boss now and uh-huh. I have to do what you... Right. You know? Hey, yeah. hey, hey, yeah. hey. Uh, if you guys don't want to hear from me, just have Tony, Tony rip out my cord. Physical over here. There we go. But yeah, it was, I, I hate him. So that's why I saw Empire Strikes Back. That was 25 of the 28 viewings I saw in the theater. Now 29 viewings. Because I saw it at the drive-in during the pandemic. Pandemic. I saw. Wait, did you go to the uh, Marcus? Marcus. Yeah. I wanted to smack the people right in front of me. Like I did that drive-in experience too. We did Inside Out. Yep. Empire Strikes Back: Double yep. Feature. We did this. We were probably there the same night. Yeah. Well, they were doing it two weekends. But uh, wait, did did the Empire Strikes Back showing occur after Inside Out? Yeah. Okay. Was it raining during Empire? Like in between yeah. the two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it was probably the same night. Probably then. the same night then. Yeah, no, it, it was weird, and uh, it's interesting. The rate I, I want to do that again, but uh, the people that came out, and then you're supposed to socially distance. This is during the height of the pandemic, right? And they they get out of the car, and then they just start sitting next to each other, and then they sit in front of the car. So like they had their parking spot, but then they chose to sit in front of my car. I was like, they broke every possible drive-in protocol. No kidding. I was like, come on, people. Isn't the point of a drive-in you sit in your car? Exactly. I, I've never been to a drive-in, but I'm assuming that that's the way it works. That, uh, that's I Because the thing is, um, you use your, AM, or your radio or your uh, okay, right. your phone right. to have a radio tuner. Right, right. And you just hook it up to your car speakers, right. and that's your sound. They had an external, uh, like a boombox or something gotcha. like that. They got out of the car. But then they chose to sit right in front of us and block in our point of view. Like, the screen wasn't that big, but... Mm-hmm. It was still a cool experience. Anytime you can see uh, Empire again, it's worth sure. it. Absolutely, the theater, yeah. big screen. Yeah. yeah, but but you know, part of it part of it is when you go to a drive-in theater, it's got the massive screen. The thing is, right. that, that that screen is the the parking lot there, and the screen is so small that we were having to scrunch down or <laughs> lean way back, and that's not how it's supposed to be at a drive-in. But I appreciate the effort. They got some good films. I went a couple of times to see. Uh, a couple of the movies that they were showing over yeah. there just because it was nostalgic. I mean, you know, they of showed, they showed right. Ghostbusters, they showed Empire, you know. They, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to go sub- and and I like that movie theater. I'm going to support and Marcus is Marcus it's is it still family owned or yes. is it publicly traded? No, I think it's Mr. family Marcus. Owned. Well, yeah, Mr. Marcus is in front of every movie over right. that theater. But I like the theaters. I like the chain. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I have nothing bad to say about those theaters. I so. grew up uh, the one in Addison. Now I freak out the one in Elgin because um, I went to high school right around the corner. Yeah. Um, but uh, I remember seeing Blade Runner in 2049 and, uh, in that theater. It was one of the best theater watching mm-hmm. experiences ever. Mm-hmm. And they were re- they were early adopters on the whole uh, assigned Seats. seating. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the yeah. and I love that. I am the guy. Yo, know, I I would get to a movie theater half an hour early uh-huh. so just to I get a good have, seat. An, I half an be, hour, an hour. I'd get I'd be dead center. Yeah, you know, I've got to be dead center on the screen. Dead center, upper middle. Yeah, I I, I have to be. It, it's just the way that I'm. Wired. Of course. Yeah. Well, I mean, lots of people. It's it's ideal. I've been there many many times. <laughs> the worst experience was watching Titanic. Uh, with two other people, um, like third row from the front on the side. That was just like terrible, say, terrible seat. Say that sentence again. So third row from no, the front. Start from the beginning. Oh, so the worst experience I had stop. was watching Titanic. Full stop. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst experience you had was watching Titanic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he ain't hey, that, the first half of that film, like yeah. the historical part, Yeah. you know, a.k.a. the documentary that you could probably watch. Yeah. Did did you hear the whole story about James Cameron and wanting to make Titanic? I, I've I've heard some of it, but I know how it ends, so I never. No, yeah. I never sat. <laughs> I never sat he, and watched. He it. sunk. It sunk. I never sat and watched. It. He he folks, made the movie to finance uh, the, the the expedition the, 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 to go down and actually look. Yeah, at to it. make yeah. the sub and go down. Right. Which I mean, I get it. I'm still trying to figure out what uh, he bamboozled to make Avatar for the next. 30 years of well, his the life. Well, of, the fact that... Well, the, it's going to make a bunch of money, probably, so... Well, the first movie was... I, I mean, it's 10 years old at this point, right? right. You know, so... It feels like it's 20. It does. It really does. But it, it, it gave us, you know, it finally gave us a use for those damn 3D glasses. I can't watch a movie in 3D. That was one of the only ones where you he, he, he lit it and he, he made it vibrant enough that yeah. it wasn't killed through those 3D glasses. Right. Uh, yeah, sure. The last movie that I saw with 3D glasses on was Thor, 
the original four. So whenever the fuck that came out, I went and saw it. it, it Two thousand eight or nine. And I I stopped because in that movie in particular, when they go to like when they go to Jotunheim, yeah, the the uh, ice giant uh, world, <laughs> it's at night. It's, pitch it's black, all dark. Yeah. And they're, they, you know, they dimly lit everything in blue, and it, and it looks spectacular, except when you're trying to watch through 3D glasses, because you're going, mm-hmm. what? Yeah. What's going on? That's why I don't uh, watch any... I only watched one thing in 3D, and I don't even remember what it was. Oh, you know what? It was an animated film. And Bear here's, Wolf? It might have been Brave. Okay. And here's the reason. Animated films in 3D, you can adjust the brightness mm-hmm. and saturation... You or can, the 3D prints they a lot can, easier than you can rotoscope out. You, you can also push and pull elements in yes, 3D a lot yeah. easier in animated films. Right. I don't know with with the with the sophistication of the the editing software that they've got, and I mean shit, the stuff that you can do in just an Adobe suite, you should be able to make that shit work. Come on, man! You can do anything. Just it's money. It's how much money you want to put at that's the process. Fair. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a fair yeah. statement right there. My favorite is all these people that uh, they go in, and they go, oh, you know, twenty years later, look at me, I can do better three D uh, CGI on my home computer now. I'm like, well, it's twenty years later, and there's a reason you could do better is because they pioneered it, and then the software got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and now you guys are blessed to mm-hmm. have the ability to do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I keep hearing people bash on the Phantom Menace, for instance, right? Oh, God, and they're no. saying, the CGI is, 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 is so bad. I'm like, guess what? If you look at ILM's early works and stuff like that, there's, you know, the reason Jurassic Park, we talked about this on the show, is like, yeah. there's a lot of practical effects and a few small effects. The more CGI happened, they had to pioneer it. They had to test it out. They had to build the tools. So they went through, like, the rough teenage years, you know, the girl spurts. And then look at the, some of the movies nowadays. It's like interchangeable. Right. It's like that how it goes. You have to go through the awkward growth spurts. And now it's come full circle to where they're making, they've got the ability to make really good CGI and, and yep. or mix it with the 3D tracking and the and that kind of stuff. But a lot of movies don't do no. that, even though exactly. they should. Yep. Uh, because it would look much better. Mm-hmm. But they don't do it because it's now it's just easier to do it as CGI and have it be passable instead of actually really good. Even yep. in big budget movies like Black Panther, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some of the CGI in that was awful. Like with the, yeah. the battles, the fights where they're jumping all over the place and they look like Spider-Mans from the 1980s yeah. or something. I mean, the, some of that was, they, was they, very The rubber done. people, the, yeah, the rubber, rubber stunner. They, look, yeah. they don't yes. look real. They don't move real because you can tell them when they're doing the motion tracking stuff and when they're not yeah <clears throat> one so. of the one of the ones that that catches my eye the most um i i, I recently re-watched a part of x-men origins wolverine oh boy is that the bad one that's the that's the worst offender of all is that the one where he goes to japan no, no that's, that's the wolverine that's the wolverine and i okay, like that's that the, one that's a good one <clears throat> okay no, uh, X Men Origins Wolverine is the one that introduced. Is that the Lee Schreiber Ryan one? Reynolds. That's the Lee Schreiber yeah, with yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Okay, but no. here's the thing, you know, even because I enjoyed that mouth. movie, I liked the Lee Schreiber's Saber Tooth. Yeah, I really some did. Some of that movie was really yeah, yeah. good, but some of it was the worst ever. I I enjoyed the film as a film up until the point the where they piss. what's <laughs> the, that the the ending the last twenty minutes. Yeah, so Pretty the much. moment they introduced Gambit. I, that's yeah. when. That's when. To me, because you get Gambit, and then you get the adamantium bullet that can pierce adamantium and somehow just make him lose his memory. Right. Uh, but they use that same bullet in Logan mm-hmm. to kill the the Wolverine clone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. But when 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 you know Logan gets hit with it, how you doing, Rob? Sabretooth is well. No, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna argue with you. Because I think Wolverine is still worth watching in that movie, but everything they put around them was just awful. Yeah, yeah. you know. They, but I, and I didn't notice it at first because I was just so engaged in the film. The special effects in that movie are especially horrible, especially Wolverine's claws. <laughs> right. Yeah. There was a point where when when he pops his claws on the in the farmhouse, you know, and he cuts open the sink, and the claws. Look like they're coming out of the middle of his forearm, and they're kind of bent like this. Right. It was. I, I'm exaggerating right a little bit, but it's noticeable. It's it like, was what the heck's so. Going on? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like okay, wow, someone needs to lose their. Yeah, yeah. I can go to Comic Con and see plenty of guys who just hold metal hooks in right, their right. hands. Holding yep. forks. It's a lot better With that way. Claws. Mm. Yes, Vidi Vidi Vova. I want to become famous. <laughs> 
You I don't prick. think that's a real person. Uh, I'm just gonna think? I'm just gonna go out on a limb there. You just and that block. Feeling. Felt so it's good. A not real person. Oh, no. Um what do we what do we get what are we talking I got about excited. Today? We had another follower. <laughs> I know there's a way ah, I'm not gonna bother with it right now. What are we talking about today? I, I mean it's kind of free form, but I, I, I kinda wanna talk about you know, we've got you know, we we've got grown ups who are running the country. We've got we just had another uh two hundred million doses of vaccine procured. Mm-hmm. Things appear to be getting back on track. Even here in the state of Illinois, things are getting a little bit better for us. So let's all assume mm-hmm. that in the next two to three months, let's say by let's say by the end of May. Okay. You know what then, happens when you assume, right? I know. <laughs> let's say by the end of May, uh-huh. we're all you know, the majority of us are able to get our second dose of vaccine. Mm-hmm. And we're able to start to resume normal day-to-day life what are you looking forward to honestly yeah i'm hoping i still don't have to go downtown to work <laughs> yeah i'm pretty happy working from home so yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, i'm not uh, i don't want to go anywhere yeah i just told my boss that today and I'm like, yeah i don't i don't ever want to go back to the office he's like yeah i don't want to either <laughs> yeah <laughs> all, all, all joking aside it's funny i'm actually more productive <laughs> I am from too. Home. no I, it's... I had the best year <laughs> yeah. that i've ever had at that place and you you'll like this like i find myself now actually having slightly more expendable income so I can spend it at the game store if yes. I ever went back. Yes. Excellent. So, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Mr. I mean, Burns over here. So, so yeah, because you're, you're, taking, you're taking the Metra from the Okay, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll toss out some rough numbers here that are mm-hmm. open source here. So, uh, to get from Big Timber down to Chicago, at least 240 a month, and that's... Who knows if Metro decides to up it because of uh, uh, they're running out of uh, riders right, right. now. Uh, in addition to like another thirty dollars a month just in parking alone. Oh yeah, yeah, you got to pay to park at the Metro station. Yep. Yeah. So and then on top of all that, think about how much as much as I missed the food downtown. Think about how much lunches oh, down yeah. there. Right. And I'm like, I'm not the McDonald's guy. Like, I'll go to Chipotle as my cheap meal. Right. Yep. So that's like ten dollars there. Not to mention an hour there and back every day. Exactly. Yeah. An oh, so hour? Like, no, no. no. From Big it's two hours from me getting out of my um, driveway yeah. to downtown Is and into my desk. Hours? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I want to say the train ride by itself from Big Timber is an hour, hour and 20. fifteen. Yeah, yeah. twenty. Mm-hmm. Yep. So then I have another thirty minute walk. So take all that away of when I can actually be mm-hmm. working, and also the fact that let's say. So the game stores, and you could discuss your hours too, but like a lot of times the game stores um, during the week, because like usually it's the weekend hours or when right. people have the thing, they'll usually close yeah, like nine know. or ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say our on friends, average. Yeah, our friends at yep. Grognard kept us open till ten. Yeah. Well, yeah. So a lot of good stores have uh, policies that if you have a player based in there, and they're making money and you know right. their people are playing, they'll stay a little later. Right. It's they'll they'll close if they got nobody there. Right. So that'll give me the opportunity to bust my butt during the day I'm, and yeah. spend more time gaming. So, I'm spending a lot of money on games that I'm just not playing right now. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. I, I, Todd, I want to come back to your store. <laughs> I want well, your I store. Come back. Well, I, I told, I've already told my wife. I'm like, one, once we're back to normal, I'm mm-hmm. like, I see myself spending three nights a week. <laughs> And she's, she's like, it's about time. It might be crazy when we when, when it does finally kind of break open a little bit. It might, it might be a little crazy. I'm, I mean, not just at my store. I mean, restaurants and oh yeah, movie oh. theaters and everywhere. People are just itching to get out. Yeah, and it's do terrible. Stuff. And it's it won't be in all. You know, you're not going to flip a switch. Obviously, on right. some level, yeah. it's going to be a trickle. I mean, we just did at the store reopen our reservation system so we have three tables only available for gameplay yep. only maximum of four people per table the yep. tables are spread out a, a, across the entire store so they're liter- literally would you do every other and just get rid of the table in between it, it and it's only the high top so they're yeah. literally that makes know, the, sense the, the tables from the f- front to the back are 60 feet away from each other and, right and then there's one in the middle so i mean they're spaced out 20 feet apart 
And, and, so, uh, and you've and got and that's just barely getting back into it again. Right. So and that's only you know it's from noon to three and yeah. then four and to se- or just, three to seven. Yeah. It's just two time slots a day per table. And right. It's just like a restaurant, right? You make a reservation, <laughs> you come in and you play your game and you leave. The whole right. idea is that you don't come in and hang out all day long. So and can we change? Don't have the room. We don't. We don't have the capacity. Right. To have people hanging out all day long. And let's so, get Howie a uh, waiter outfit. We can be like garçon. That's right. <laughs> Diet Coke table two. To work uh, bringing waters. There we go. Hmm. That would, I mean, that'd be good though. We could we could charge a dollar ninety five for water then instead of fifty cents. So mm-hmm. that would be that's, a, that's a no, no no well, no. Like it, it's like three well, x uh, the bottle of wine. If, you, if you're sending if you're exactly. sending Howie to tip, the table, and then it's a tip. So. If you're sending Howie to the tables, you're gonna have to pay people to take that water. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, <laughs> he's the funny one though. People, he is. People, I love people, Howie. Uh, yeah, he'll make up for it in tip. Yeah, he that's does. right. That's right. There you go. Make the tip. He has to split it with the store though. Exactly. You give him a twenty percent and the eighty. For the back of the house. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Support it's staff. Awesome. Support uh, staff. Yeah. No, I, honestly, like, it would be nice to uh, to game again. I know that's one of the reasons why we're talking about this subject. Yeah. And to d- be able to do so safely. And, you know, funny enough, actually, the one thing that I really do miss is, specifically when I went to Grognards, and then I had another one, it's the diner. I loved yeah, going right. to <laughs> the <laughs> diner. Yeah. Uncle, that, that was part of my tradition when I go to the game store. Yep. Uncle Bill's. We, huh? need, a, we need a bell. Ding. Ding. Uncle, Uncle Bill's. Bill's diner. Yep. I go to Uncle Bill's, and like, even if he didn't know my name, he knew me. Yeah. Right. Just by the sheer times that I would go there. Mm-hmm. And then he always gave me a free coffee to go. Yeah. Yeah, he does that for for yeah. He's a good yeah. guy. I know, I know. Not just me. That's right, just right. him. He but that, yeah. I just wish they'd put a little salt on their food with, before they <laughs> see. That's all. That's it. So Seasoning. Is that a little it? bit of salt and pepper That's goes funny. a long way. It's it's the Greek thing. Relax. It is. Oh no, no. I, I love Uncle Bill's. <laughs> uh, that, that other place is that uh, Doma. Is that Doma? Yeah. Did, are they still? Are they're they still s- open. Yeah. Good. They're still doing it. Yeah. Good. 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 That's a, yeah, that's some good halal it's food got, right there. It, it, I think it's real good. I love um, that stuff. I don't. I don't get it real often, but because uh, it's not exactly my favorite. But the things yeah. that I've had there that I will eat are very good. The chicken yeah. sandwich is amazing, and yep. the fries are unbelievable with the the, the stuff on there. So. Yeah, and they're uh, so they're still open. They're still doing it. Good, they're, and that's the thing that scares that, that scares me most. You know, it, it, all these these small businesses. Like, fortunately for you, your you know yours and Adrian's and Howie's your your, your um, fi- personal finances aren't really right. impacted by the store. Right. So you could, and as long as the store kept bringing in enough to pay for itself, you guys were have been okay. And right. I'm, I'm so happy for that. Uh, it's but it's small, like uh, Sweetberry Cafe right over there. Right. I love that place. Have you ever eaten there? Mm. It's right over there on McLean. Oh, so good. Oh yeah. no, I haven't. Yeah, it's 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 great. It is just a little bitty family restaurant. Yep. But definitely a step up. It's not a diner, right? It's definitely a nice family restaurant. Yeah, yeah. it is real a, good food. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not cheap. It's kind of suburban yeah. good food, but it's but it's real good food. Giant. Uh, I Giant brought, portions. I oh my god! My, I brought my nephew there one time, and he ordered. He's like, "What is?" Stuffed French toast. <laughs> I, said, I said, "Oh, you need to get it. It's real good." He yeah. said, "Okay," and he 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 we brought it out to the table, and it's Thick. eight inches tall, right? And he ate it, and he's like, "That's the best thing I've ever eaten in my entire life." Yeah, yeah, it was so funny. My in laws, my in laws, who are uh, I love them. They're persnickety when it comes to their food, they, and and they came here to watch our kids for something, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna go. Oh. We'll go check this out." And they came. They raved. Yeah, for I mean they're like they're like oh my god this thing, this place is the place best thing ever they're stuffed French have, toast but, yeah so sweet berry okay yeah. I it's by my sister's my sister's uh, off uh, twenty okay yeah. so it's it's actually closer to that part of South Elgin than Dude, it's, it's closer it's, to Elgin are than, you on the no. other side of the tracks no. uh, I'm I'm on Randall and like Silver Glen Dude gotcha. it's it's two and a half minutes from here oh okay yeah. gotcha so it's go to McLean to, go to yeah. McLean straight turn east of left. here yeah gotcha Sister. okay. I know where for that all is. The, uh, for all those in California, uh, <laughs> to this, this, this is, is great local pod. pod. <laughs> this is local pod. But okay. yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I, you know, I play games. I got into tabletop gaming as opposed to video gaming because I like the social aspect of games. That's what's always, and that's why I don't. You know, you, you've commented in the past. I don't care if I win or lose. Mm-hmm. I hate. I hate it when people stomp a mud hole in me and they're mm-hmm. like, oh ho ho ho. Right. You know, when but they nobody likes that. So. Right. Yeah. But you know, I would rather lose a close game than stomp a mud hole in my opponent mm-hmm. every time. I like the social aspect. I met both of you because I play games. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Ah. 
But no, I, I no, I, I agree because uh, so one of the things is uh, I've been trying to play games on my computer on like Steam and stuff like that, tabletop simulator and whatnot. Uh, yeah, it, exactly. So, um, and I've been playing a few things with uh, my fiance a little bit. Um, but the the thing is, it's. It's not the same. Like I, we've been slowly getting into tabletop games, but like in person with my fiance is way better than tabletop simulator. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like I, I like tabletop simulator, but like like X Wing is my game. Right. But I haven't played in two years. Um, I don't even know what the new expansions are. So like, part of me wants to like do like a weekly. Oh, this wave came out. Let's play with these toys and like force ourselves to learn some of the new things. But. Even if we could go on Tabletop Simulator, it's just not the same. It's not. It's not the same as rolling those dice. Although, I, I will say that I love the fact that you can rage flip the table in Tabletop Simulator. <laughs> that is true. Nice. And it's it's less messy. <laughs> it is. Right. Not as fun, though. No, it's not as fun, but it is. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's not the same. I like the social interaction. I, I went to tournaments not for the high level of competition. I went for... The community aspect of it, to meet different yeah. people, right. to play with people that I wouldn't necessarily play with on a daily basis, see, you know, and you know, meet strange and interesting people and kill them. Yeah, you yeah. know, that's I, right. If I could, I would try to also remake my casual local community again. And, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to do like friendly, casual. Alt. I, what I used to do is alt format tournaments. Mm hmm. So uh, what he was talking about was like highly competitive. Like there's right. a certain way to play every game, right? And um, which makes me crazy, by the way. But yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a certain way to play a certain game, and the maker of the game would run tournaments on it, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was other different types of formats that you could run, and you could even find different scoring sheets and stuff like that. And the other way is you can actually help out the local gaming stores. There's ways to do it where, like, the merchandise was not like the the prizes were not dictated by a prize box from the manufacturer right mm -hmm. there, there's a way to help out like the communities and the local gaming stores by running like all format tournaments but the problem yeah. is it was completely blindsided by the highly competitive side and i was trying to figure out how to uh uh to find that balance it's, in the community but the tough. problem was it was um it was eating each other you know like it was the same player base and it, it needs to be two separate player bases because those competitive people need to just keep no, playing. No, I, I don't know. I, I just don't think it, but what, what they, what you need to do is you, you need to find a way to encourage those uber competitive people to step out of their uber yes. competitive nature. They need to leave the uber competitive nature at home. It, they need to put on, they need to put on sweatpants and t-shirts. I'm not even, even going to say that. Here's the thing. It's okay to be competitive at a, at a, casual type event it's okay to want to win yeah. what what my thing is i like to i take it as a personal challenge taking suboptimal units mm -hmm. you know you play that one card that everybody goes but that's the thing what? like those are the, the, the those are the rules like what if you uh rule tested certain things mm -hmm. where you forced people to not have to play their main list right. in whatever game it was i i think that it, so back when i was you know, when I was judging at multiple venues for multiple games, WizKids game systems, um, the best way that I found was to build that, uh, you know, build a sense of community in the group. Mm -hmm. And one of the best ways that I did that was with fellowship. Okay. So yeah, everybody gets a, you know, the, the, the top player gets a prize. Yeah. Maybe they don't get the a tier prize maybe i give them the b tier prize and instead i award the a tier prize to the person who came with the most clever list or the person who exactly you know took a beating all the way around and kept a smile on the face or the person who took that newbie and and showed them where they were making their mistakes and you build that sense of community you make sure that you don't just reward winning that's the problem with a lot of these competitive environments is okay First place you get prize A, second place gets prize B, third mm -hmm. place gets prize C. Okay, no, I go first place gets A, last place gets B. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I want to keep those kids who are, I want to give those kids who are taking the beatings on at the bottom of the list, I want to give them a reason to want to come back. You know, if, if nobody likes getting a butthole stomped in them. I, I'll, I'll them be even controversial. What if you get rid of the prize system? And uh, what if it's, so for instance... You you give the FLGS like a uh, you know a five or ten dollar uh, upfront fee in the beginning. You have like a ten week thing, and then it's basically you are rewarded at the end of the thing. 
And the the way the points would work is maybe it is like those best lists. Maybe it's not like actually winning the game. Anyhow, I, I we're off topic, but basically I'm just trying to figure out a way. Like the one thing I miss is the community, is yeah. is my answer. And I was thinking, how can you build a community uh, by like harnessing little aspects of the competitive nature yeah. without um, uh, bringing in the bad elements of competitive nature? Yeah. But the other struggle is. A lot of people like to go to the uh, FLGS during the weekends. A lot of the highly competitive events are during the weekends. So, like, when you were counting on 10 to 20 people to show up for your event and another FLGS or regionals happens and those 20 people are gone, then you're, you're shit out of luck. So, right. I'm trying to figure out, like, those, those are the questions that were bothering me, like, that I hadn't solved when I had left the game. The, the thing that I'm having a hard time solving right now is figuring out how to get people to leave... Yeah, you know, to travel to other stores. Right. You know that 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 is the you know as a, as someone who's been running X Wing and Destiny, we would get thirty people show up for the store championship or the regional pre- or the prime yeah. championship. We'd get 30, 35 players, and then the two weeks later, I'll be like at that event. Hey guys, in two weeks we got an event coming up, and we'd get our three regulars, our three store regulars. And, and the kicker is, uh, you know, the bummer is always you talk to the people and it's not like they're from, oh, we're all from Wisconsin or all we're all from two states away. Yeah. No, most of them are 35 to hour drive away. Not even that far. And often, right? So, and that's really the bummer, right? Right. That's, and and as, as a game store owner, I know a little bit about trying to build a community and mm-hmm. the struggles they're, they're in. And you, you know, we as a store have built a very I'll, I'll call it a casual community um, but also we have a great a lot of very skilled players for lots of different games right um, the easiest community to talk about is magic simply because there are more magic players than there are Anything any other else? game out yeah. there is for sure certain right? games overshadow yeah. the, the, oh, yeah, the yeah, player yeah, base yeah. overshadows other games and magic just has more individual human beings who play yeah, it than any absolutely. other game that we sell so it's easier to, easy to talk about that and when we first started you know magic's um uh price is not dissimilar to what WizKids did and and, yeah. and these other companies do they have a limited edition card instead of a model, yeah. and then p- lesser limited edition or not so limited edition prizes that they give out to all the players who play in the in the tournaments. And so when we first opened, we got a lot of what you call grinders, right? Grinders are guys that will literally, they, they play for free, right? So they'll come yep. out to the tournament, they'll put their 15 bucks down, they'll win the tournament or place in the top high enough to earn at least $15 in store credit, and, and they don't earn the store credit, they earn packs and mm-hmm. then they just trade in the, the the stuff enough to get $15 in store credit or close enough to it and then the next time they come out they cash that in and they're playing for free then so then they're just right. playing, and then they just keep doing that right and then every once in a while they'll win the tournament and win twice as much as they normally would so now they're making money so the, the grinders are, are at it I mean, yeah. yeah they play and some of them are perfectly nice human beings to, to, to talk to but they're there as a they're, they're grinding to grind. they're right there to grind right and when we first opened and we started running events for Magic, and this happens for every game, you get a certain number of grinders. They all want to check it out. It's the new store. We want to see what's going on. Yep. And we got a bunch of grinders. And slowly, or actually not so slowly, when they found out that um, not not that we aren't welcoming to anybody who wants to come out and play, because we still will get them every once in a while to, sh- to show up, but mm-hmm. the people that we played with and the people, the kind of games that we played when we weren't doing those games and the kind of prizes and price support and tournaments that we ran weren't the most optimal games for grinders and so the grinders quit showing up and i mean we get very we before the pandemic obviously we would get very few in our last few tournaments now you try to translate that into other games but you run into exactly what you were saying tony is that um we we have a casual base but instead of 30 people showing up on a saturday to casually play yeah. magic you'll get four right just because the player base is infinitesimal compared mm-hmm. to something right. like magic and so it's really 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 hard to get those guys even for a game as popular as warhammer 40k which is the next most popular game we sell in the store it's almost impossible to organize and get a regular crew of say 10 guys 
on any night of the week for casual games, right? Right. Um, and so that part, game involves a lot of setup, though. It, it, you know. it does. It's, it's like Armada. It, it's just you're setting up for but 45 times minutes. ten, right? It yeah, is. Yeah, right. there's is. a lot of setup. There's definite, and there's a hobby aspect to it, right? right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but part of the point of the store is to give people a reason to play, and so we have to run tournaments, we have to run leagues, we have to do things, and those are the kinds of things which absolutely help build a community and help get. I don't want to get again. I don't want to get rid of competitive players. Like, yeah. if, if you're if you have fun playing the game competitively, great. And there's plenty of venues for that, and we will do that occasionally. So there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But generally speaking, um, our community, kind of quote unquote, is made up of more casual players. And again, just because you're a casual player doesn't mean you're a bad player. Right. Yeah. We have some very casual Magic players who are very very good Magic players. Right. I mean, they are top notch yeah. players. Uh, not to mention some of the other games that we've had in the store we've had literal world champions play in the store guild ball and yeah uh, uh, board games and some other you know uh high quality x-wing players and, and all kinds of stuff so. oh yeah we've had you know we've streamed we, we've streamed with gold squad the hardest thing though the hardest thing is trying to keep on you know and i'm hoping that amg taking over x-wing i'm hoping that that helps a little bit because they are yeah. you know, their prize support for mcp prior to everything going to hell, mm-hmm. we know was minimal. It was league kits. It was small things. It wasn't, they're, they're focused more on narrative uh, events <laughs> as opposed I'm to- I'm laughing at Rob's description mm-hmm. of himself. Casual, casual competitive. competitive. <laughs> no, I, uh, <laughs> and that's what I, kind of what I mean by casual, good, but, but good, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Anyway. Keep, Sorry. No, again. no, it's fine. It's- um, Go ahead. No, I, I just, yeah. I keep thinking, honestly, the-, the my favorite solution is like if if the competitive stuff was like on the weekends and then the casual stuff was during the week. The hard the, thing the, is getting people to come out during the week. You know, yeah. and, oh, it's terrible. And I, I couldn't make it. Like half the time, uh, I think when, Monday nights you were at Grog's. Yep. And Monday night Atari cluster. It's like, Pasquale, we're doing here. Here's yeah, the Atari so cluster. So that time, uh, if I had left the office at 4.50, which technically I'm supposed to work till 5.00, I would get home by seven ten, and then I'd turn around and hop twenty minutes on the Elgin O'Hare, so seven thirty, and that's me not eating. If I miss that train, then we're talking like eight fifteen. Oh yeah, this is the this is what I hate. I know. This is exactly the thing that I hate. And that's why and nowadays, like if things were reversed and things were like now, it's like shit. I could work till six. Hop on the EOE, and I'd still be there by seven, even after eating. Well, what's yeah, and that's the thing about now. The the downside here's the one downside. We were talking earlier about the things we love about working from home. The yeah. One downside is I find myself putting in more hours because it's so much easier to yes, just sit right. there. It's like okay, uh, lunch. I walk upstairs, I grab a sandwich, I come right back down here, and I sit right back down in front of my computer. Right. And yeah. I find it so much easier because I don't well, have I don't have to jump in the car. I don't have to get in the commute. And I'm an answer. And I'm a phone guy, so if the phone rings, so I answer it. Like right. yeah. I might be on my lunch. Quote, quote, unquote, but I'm sitting there, so I'm going to answer it. Right, exactly. exactly. Right? You don't have a dedicated me, hour yeah. to yourself. You know, I talked to my boss. He's like, well, you got more done this year than you've ever got done in your life. I'm like, I wonder why. Yeah. You know, because I, because <laughs> I'm not spending my, my computer 10 hours a day instead right. of eight hours a day. And, and I'm not in the car. I will do something while I'm there. And when I'm done, I can just walk upstairs and eat dinner. I don't have to worry about driving home and going anywhere else, right? <laughs> when the whole pandemic started, I was actually working off of my, before I, they sent me the monitor, and I had to get the monitor. My neck and my eyes were starting to kill me. But I was working off my laptop in in mm-hmm. the office, mm-hmm. and when I was working in there, I'm like, "Well, look at all these these models and paints that I'm surrounded <laughs> right. by." I because if you look at my calendar, I mean, last week I had 32 hours worth of meetings on my books. Nice, 32 hours in a week. When the fuck do I do my job? There's, I don't there's know. No work. Yeah. So I would sit there, camera off, but listening with a mini in my hand and a brush going. <laughs> right. And my boss, the one time we were on camera, my bo- my boss on my arm, like kind of moving a little bit. He's like, "Tony, what are you doing there?" I'm like, "Oh, um, I'm dry brushing." Because <laughs> I, yeah, I right. told him, "I'm like, you, you know, do it mindlessly, right?" It's talking, like, yeah. it's I'm like, I'm not not doing my work. I'm just sitting here, kind of scrubbing a paintbrush across. Because he he kept noticing I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. Now it's so yeah, so camera's off from then on. Let me. I have a question for you guys. Yeah. So, again, assuming everything is what you our, our supposition was, right? So right. Yeah. The uh, back to normalcy, you know, close getting there, getting there. So Gen Con is on, and I know we kind of for now. I think we kind of yeah. touch base on this. So are are you guys? Yes or no? I mean, so um, 
the Biden administration. Would, would you go? I guess is the question. Uh, the My Biden. Question if if I could go? theoretically, if Gen Con said they were still going to enforce mask rules, and I got vaccinated, like the Biden administration is trying to be cautiously optimistic, and they're saying by summer. Right. I I I think I would go. Yeah. Uh, I'd and, still wear, be wearing a mask even if vaccinated. Right. I, I think there's still precautions I can yeah, take. Yeah, you can. Uh, I, I think that if you're going... So, again, the masks are to protect you and not me, right? And they're only 70% effective again, uh, for protecting me against you. The mask Something is that, to pr- protect other people from yourself. Right. I Right now, I'm planning, but not... That's the thing that I hate. It's like right. I'm obviously not going to gift the hotel in the right. the, the main well, block. And that's the thing. They're, they they right now. You know, we're January 27th. By this point, the hotels are sold out right, downtown. Right. You know, you're you're they they put everything on sale January 6th mm-hmm. was when badges went on sale and hotels opened up. Um, if we don't see that soon, I'm not optimistic that it's going to go off. Right. That's my key thing. Uh, I haven't been. I, I've been reaching out to my guys. We haven't heard anything about event registration yet. Yeah. I mean that the load that it takes for them to put that Bible together. Well, and I, I wonder if they're just gonna if they if it does go off, it's just gonna be a very limited version of it. Like they'll just do vendor hall and a very limited number of panels. Events. Yeah, panels and events, and they won't do. You know, maybe they won't do the dome this year. Maybe they won't do True Dungeon this year. You know what I mean? They'll yeah. still have a Gen Con, and then they'll have a co-virtual Gen Con at the same time and I think you're going to see more and more of that. I think you're going to you're going to start to see conventions where they are going to sell virtual tickets so that you can get into all you know, they'll be able to sell the panels, right? Right, yeah. Um right now when I when I look on Facebook, half of my Facebook is Galaxy Con online and Wizard World yeah. online hawking their celeb, you know, their celeb one-on-ones, their Q&As and right. you know, buy the autograph package. Look, for me, an autograph package, when I'm when I was buying an autograph, it's because I had the opportunity to meet that person. It's kind right. of the memento of meeting someone. I don't collect autographs just to collect autographs. I know right. there are people that do. Right. I don't knock them for that. Hey, you do you. You right. yeah, that's your hobby. Uh, you know, but that's not why I collect autographs. Right. Um, I, I'll be hard pressed. I actually someone was desperate for a Jeremy Bullock autograph. And it actually was just a couple of weeks before he died. Um, I have, I've got like six of them. Like, okay, well, if, if he really wants one, I'll sell it to him reasonably. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like 50, 60 bucks. Yeah. It's yours. No problem. I'll ship it, you know, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Oh, $60. I'm like, well, okay, that that's not being unreasonable. <laughs> right. I'm like, you're, you're complaining that they're going for like $120 on eBay. I'm offering you half that price. Right. Yeah. And I can guarantee it's authenticity because I collected that autograph myself mm-hmm. when I met him yeah. at a convention. And we had that conversation right. last week. What I really I want is this cocktail napkin from the drink you had at the bar. I'm just kidding. That's right. The DNA. We yeah. Can clone I, it. I want the DNA of <laughs> his <laughs> lips on your now head. Um, <laughs> are there other conventions this year later than in that yeah. that you guys? I know. Like normally, so, uh, what, like Adepticon's usually like well, in Adepticon is canceled this yeah, year for this sure. Year. So it'll be next year. I would year. go. Absolutely interested in that. Yeah. Uh, um, I, the only other thing I know is like smaller. Uh, Capri- Capricorn is going off uh, next weekend, virtual, 100% virtual. I don't know about DuckCon or WindyCon for the smaller sci-fi yeah. shows. Uh, C2E2 is normally in the March-April time frame. So. They pushed it to December. Okay. So that one's going to be interesting because it's like, okay, are you going to do another one four months later in Chicago? Right, yeah. And or you it, shift the whole thing to the end of the year, Anyways. and I'm and I'm waiting to. Say, I'm like, well, December in Chicago, down by the lakefront. Mm-hmm. Hey, Chinese restaurant. Oh, I'll, I'll, we're going to hit that place. <laughs> we are going to hit that dim hey, sum. When joint. me, him, and Travis can sit there and eat for thirty bucks. Nice. It was so good, yeah. Todd. So good. so good. See, this so is what good. I'm talking about. It's the the camaraderie of sitting. Actually, it's not even the gaming convention, right? That I miss. It's mm-hmm. it's the the camaraderie yeah. around it, and like before all the drama of like, oh, this person's going to that sort, or this person's not getting this. It's like it felt like a community. Which for someone like me, I think I said last time we were talking, it was like 2013, 2014. 
you know, I went through the, I call it the 90s dark ages of, like, Star Wars nerddom. Like, it wasn't cool to be a nerd too much mm. back then. And I'm sure the 80s were not that big either. And then all of a sudden, movie pop culture, like, boomed and everybody's a nerd. Like, I found a place that I well, felt. The, the 80s had a thing called the Satanic Panic, if that tells you Oh, yeah, God, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. If you want to talk about friendliness to nerds. Oh, well, and right. the PMRC. Come mm, on, let's right. not yeah. forget that. Exactly. So I guess the, all I'm trying to say is. For like three or four golden years, and like if it didn't feel like work, it felt like I was hanging out with a bunch of people that I was enjoying. And then like the 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 more that I was event planning and like dealing with the drama and all that shit, then it it just felt like I'm trying to p- piss this person off, trying to piss that person yeah. off. So looking forward again to going back and hanging out more than. Yes. Exactly. I don't want to go work. I don't want to go work at convention. Yes. You know, for other local stuff, you know, for the store, you know, we do Adepticon every year, which is in March. And mm-hmm. then we do Little Wars every year. Little mm-hmm. Wars yeah. is always exactly a month after Adepticon. Yeah. And they are tentatively planning on doing it this year mm-hmm. as a live con, and I, I've done it every year. They're asking me if I want to participate, Oof. and I, I have not officially responded, yay or nay, but I don't think I can. In a reasonable fashion, even though I'm the one who works it, like nobody else works right, it. Right, <laughs> I'm the one who goes and does that because I, I yeah. enjoy working the conventions. But they have event registration. Nope. Little Wars does. Yeah. Yep. They they have solicited me to be a vendor. I think I'm probably going to pass this year. Yeah. Um, I can't see doing anything before June. June before the summer. Yeah, for sure. And then, like in the fall, is Dragonfall, and that's another miniature game convention. But that's not till October, so. right? And now, and by then, I and and that's why I'm thinking, you know, Gen Con is the first weekend in August, and that's in that really, really mm-hmm. perilous point where end of summer depends on how things go. Yeah. We know we 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 know when you know prior to January 20th, things were not going well right. for the distribution of the vaccine. We're hoping things are getting better right now. We can't be 100% certain until things and, start rolling out. Plus, Gen Con is huge, right? You're talking about 60,000 60, people instead of Adepticon is 6,000 people. Right. You're like, okay, well... You're not going to get 60. About, well, not this year, but no. and now I'm talking about... And then, like, Little Wars is 400. You know what I mean? Right. So, And they're not all packed into the same room doing the same thing. So you've got very large differences between these kinds of events. Right. But then the timing makes the the risk scale so much different, right? So the risk scale is way higher, mm-hmm. oddly for at least seemingly way higher for Little Wars at four hundred people. The risk, right. I'm, yes. my perceived risk for that four hundred person convention is way higher than it would be even for Gen Con. Let's say they get thirty thousand people, right. right? Because it's five six months later, whatever it is, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I would think harder about going to Gen Con than than Little Wars, yeah. and I would like as a human being. I would go to Little Wars probably because I can control. It's more intimate. You can hang out with. But if I'm going to go as a vendor, I have to stand there and interact with everybody who walks up and wants yeah. to interact with me. It's so right. kind of trapped. Even if it's only a few hundred people, just build a plexiglass box around well, the, you I mean, and the register. Literally, you know. I mean, that's you know who knows, yeah. right? I'm, I'm sure that's a thing you absolutely could do. And right? even and Gen Con, you know, over the last let's say six, seven years since it's really, ex- I mean absolutely exploded in its popularity right it's always been popular it's always been the country's largest but my god what's happened over the last six seven years it's like it's like looking at san diego comic-con in 2005 versus today you know it's it's not on the same scale oh but i I was always curious about maybe going to origins one year but yeah. It's a good show for uh, everything I've heard. It's a good show. I have not been, mm-hmm. uh, but it's, it's Gen Con twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. it's that's exactly, exactly why. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. Right. Um, but the thing of it is, Gen Con, with the exception of the vendor hall, the vendor hall is the absolute worst of it right. because everybody's trying to get through, and you are, you know, you're packed in like right. this sardines. But once you get escape and you get to like the the table area where the games are being played, where yeah. the tournaments are being ran, all of a sudden it just opens up. Yeah. As long as you're not standing in a line waiting for a specific game or event or something. The vendor hall is where the buying and selling occurs. All the tables are where the playing is. Right. And especially when you even get to the hotel rooms and the the more niche gaming, the more niche role playing. The fewer right. people the, you're going to have there. The f- yeah. But the more niche you get to, the more oddball of a... Of a um, 
a participant you can get, right? Yes. So, and at the same time, like that could make or break your experience. That's right. Well, it's not even about the experience. It could be. It could be make. When I say oddball, I mean when when you're talking about uh, you know oddball games will draw an oddball fan base. Yes. You're not necessarily going to have the same kind of mentality that I, I mean I'm going to say 95 percent of the people who would be going considering going to Gen Con are going to be reasonably minded. It's that five percent that can screw over everybody else. Yeah. And and that's what I'd be afraid of in those smaller rooms, yeah, like right. you said. You know, it's is that like when you walk into the Malifaux room in, uh, <laughs> at, at Adepticon and everybody's got either got a top hat or a monocle or both? Uh huh. Kind of like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oddball games or the or the the, the vampire larpers. The vampire. Oh larpers. yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fun story they're about fine. that. They're, I don't. They're all fine. We love them all. <laughs> we li- we at, look. We kid because we love. We, and you, we are. You find uh, your joy where you find it. I will never knock someone for finding their joy. Right. I might think that they're a little bit strange, but <laughs> oh, I, my, but so much. Trust I, me, I, 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 I've gone yeah. the uh, like. I, I'm strange, I, so. I felt like Alice in Wonderland. I oh, I I'll, I'm going to take some of this conversation offline. There, there's a. <laughs> There, there's certain niche groups like that. It's just like there's a certain level that gets a little too weird for me. Right. And actually, none of it has happened at Gen Con, I will say. Okay. And, well, and, and for me, so going back to when I was in the Army, so we're going back to 1995, 6-ish, um, was when someone told me that they made a role-playing game for vampires. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I was like, oh, vampire, okay, oh, yeah. Vampire the Masquerade. I'll uh-huh. look into this. I like playing role-playing games, so I'll take a look at it. Uh-huh. And I go through and I saw the Malkavians. And, cause the, yeah, and the thing that right. I love was the, the drawing, the guy had a, was wearing a shirt that said, ho, 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 now I have a machine gun. Yep. And I went, die hard. That's what I got to do. And I actually went to a LARP. It was it, the concept was really cool because they had rented out a, a warehouse that wasn't being used. Yep. Sure. So they rent out a warehouse on Halloween night to play vampire in. Yeah. I said, okay, this is really kind of cool. I like this. I didn't have the right group of people to role play with. They and my role playing sensibilities did not line up. Yep. And that happens. That's, it, it does. They. I. And here's what I. Here's what I'll say. I was the oddball here because I was right. I was just there to have fun. You were the odd man out, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not knocking them for their right, experience exactly. at all. Don't <laughs> think that. you got to find a group of people that take something at the same serious level as you do. That, that's yeah. how you. That's how you have to role play. So I got to a point where they were, you know, they were just they were irritating me and I was pissing them off. Nothing seemed to be going right. So I decided to be an agent of chaos for the rest of the night. <laughs> Tony went rogue. I did. Somewhere, some, someone is yeah. telling a story on a podcast right now about that one night on Halloween. That they had the <laughs> perfect that? group yeah. plan and some jerk Jack showed up. Showed and up and just ruined the whole night. And, and I didn't ruin it. <laughs> I, I, I gave you, them You made it purpose. interesting. You gave them something to talk about. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, I gave them purpose that night because their purpose was to hunt me down oh, it's and like fine and kill you. Yes, yeah, because they, they they they're like, can we get rid? We need to get rid of him. He needs to go. He yeah, that was go. one of those things where I'm like, that's okay, funny. that's probably not a bad idea. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. you know, over the and that was my first real exposure to uh, the the LARP. And what I've come to find out is that the people who do LARP Vampire do take it that seriously. That's oh, why yeah. I, of course. I can't I can't do it. Right. I, you know, I might sit down I, with you or you and play the RPG because I know what your sensibilities are like. Yes. I had a friend at local conventions, you know, Capricorn, WindyCon, where they always had a live act. They were always doing a LARP through, right. the, through the weekend, right? And you could tell by the, the – they all wore a flower or a badge or a button mm-hmm. that said – Plus they were dressed up anyway, so you could just tell. Right. Well, no, you're you're at sci-fi convention. You really oh, well, couldn't I guess, tell. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we're talking about a convention where filking was on the was a track of, of programming, um, and I love those cons. I absolutely have mm-hmm, a blast mm-hmm. on them, but I won't LARP at them. Um, I had a friend who on two different two different cons. One of them, he knew the game master for the vampire LARP. And he knew what they were doing, so he decided to become a master of misinformation for the entire party. Mm. Hey, that, that badge is kind of cool. What does that badge mean? Oh, does that have something to do with... And, and he, would, he would literally just steer them somewhere completely where they shouldn't be going just because. And he would... Because he could. Jeez. But my... 
favorite one was the one where he he went around with a stack of post-it notes that just he'd written the word staked on. And he'd come up and he'd just pat someone on the back. How's it going, guy? Have a good one. He put a post-it note on their back that said staked. Okay. I'm surprised he didn't say kick me. And the, the, the game master actually upheld them being staked. He's like, no, you let it happen. I think that's hysterical. Yep, I don't. Let's just say I don't LARP either. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. I, I need I've therapy for not, for my LARPing experience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we used to when Howie and I first started going to Gen Con, we did a couple role playing games. You know, just signed up randomly for role playing games. That he and I together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> it it just it just never worked out right. I think we did it two, maybe three yeah. times, twice for sure. Yeah, the, the third, second or third time. At one point, we were into it for an hour, and we just kind of looked at each other and didn't say anything. Yeah. And, and I'm like, "Hey, I got to go to the bathroom. Do you have to go to the bathroom?" He says, "Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I do have to go to the bathroom." And we both picked up our bags and said, "We got to go to the bathroom." And they're like, "Together?" We're like, well, "Yeah, we're gonna grab some some snack or something. Come right back." You're like, "Okay, you did bring in your bags?" Like, "Yeah, no, we'll be right back." And then and then that was it. Right? <laughs> I mean, this was many many years. Yeah. Ago. Oh yeah. That's so, that's that's so a it was kind, kind of, of a, a kind of a, a dick, dick thing to do. Oh yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Man, it was it was just not. It's work it's out. you guys and not wanting to upset them, but you needed an out. But we had to get out. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's no fun for anybody when someone is right. miserable yeah, in a right. game. Exactly. We weren't we weren't making. They weren't. Yeah. They were plenty happy that we were gone yeah. right and no. it was like a, you know anyway the, the point is that sometimes it just doesn't work there, you're right that's the point where you Leroy <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leroy Jenkins that, that would have been okay too if something had shown up that we could Leroy Jenkins that would have been fine like, yeah. uh, I charge the uh, giant you're, uh, you're what you should have done wizard. is you should have <laughs> grabbed uh, something that looks like a, a Camp Tonal or the ice cream maker right, yeah. and uh, pretended uh, you were evacuating Bespin that's yeah. right just the hell out of right. Right. yeah no when, when it comes to Role play, especially role playing. Any other game, right? Yo, know, it, it's one thing. You can thing. struggle through just about anything, right? Other than but when you're role playing, you're sitting there. You're talking about four hour sessions. If it's a campaign, you're talking about months, if not years, yeah. of four eight hour sessions. If it's not, it's a huge for you, time commitment. It is, and if it's not for you, if that group is not for you. I will never be offended if you took at me and say, dude, I'm not digging your game. Right. All right. Yeah. Hey, cool. I think the last, we, we had someone, you know, the game that we're playing on Sunday, we had a spellcaster that randomly on the, uh, the Chicago uh, 5e Adventures League page, mm-hmm. we were talking like, yeah, they're like, what, you know, what are you doing to run your adventures? I said, well, you know, we got, I got a game we've been running for almost a year, da, 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 da. And she chimed in, uh, and she's like, "Are you looking for anybody to play? Because I'm curious about how you know how it works with Discord." So we got her in, and I think we scared her off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she lasted a couple of sessions, but she was playing. She's playing a, a a gnome, and she was talking. You know, she was you doing the voice, and I mean, you've been in one session with our group, right? I don't think that our group was quite right for her. Not quite, no. And she's taking her. her Sometimes her you just gotta say it's not you, it's than us. Everybody else's, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, and that's for sure. And it was, and it's hard any time to jump into a group that is already friends, right? Right. The, you guys yeah. all know each other. You're all friends, right? You know. Well, you nice. also know somebody's play style, or yeah. And that's the other thing too. Ju- you know, just because we're friends doesn't mean I like you. You know, especially when it comes to those kind of games. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, some of my best, Brett, my best friend in the world. I love playing games with him. I hate playing games against him. Mm-hmm. He is the most analytical person I've ever met on planet Earth, and he will sit there and analyze and double analyze and triple analyze and overthink every move. I'm sitting. I'll be sitting there like, okay, and just, I'll, I'll just I'll give you the three or four minutes, and then he goes. I'm like, okay, thirty seconds. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, yeah. Because the whole time he's thinking, I'm like. So when I take you know a minute and a half, he's going uh huh yeah. So it's uh, he's over analyzing like I'm a chessboard. Like, I'm like no 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 no. <laughs> No, you don't get to complain about me ever. Right. I love him. I love playing games with him. I hate playing games against him all in the same breath. (laughs) Yeah. (sighs) Yeah. What? uh, And that's my best friend in the world for twenty years. What else? What else are we looking forward to? I'm looking forward to getting back into the movie theaters. Yeah. Yes. I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to Marvel slate of content. Um, I'm looking for. Yeah. And I'm happy that D that that uh, Warner Brothers. Is doing this, you know, split release. They'll put it on HBO Max, but they're 
are certain movies that need to be seen on the big screen as far mm-hmm. as I'm concerned. Can I just make something controversial regarding that specific thing? You certainly I can. I just watched Tenet the other day. Okay. It is a... I mean, I like... I love Christopher Nolan. Yeah. I gotta say, this one was not one of my favorite films. Sure. And he likes to say this one was good on the big screen. I disagree. Interstellar, big screen. I completely get it. The Dark Knight, big screen. Absolutely get it. I well, don't yeah, understand I, what this movie would have brought. Even on the big it, I, Inception is one that with, oh, with those folding buildings and everything. That's one big of those screen. Like, huge screen. Absolutely. But I've got a 60 inch television up in my. Yeah, you know, I got a 60 oh, inch 4K thing, yeah. TV upstairs. I've got some good surround sound when my wife lets me turn it on. Mm-hmm. You know, turn it up. <laughs> You know, you know, my my kids old my I was down here watching something and my kids were upstairs complaining because even my my small TV yeah I've got my old stereo receiver on there with the subwoofer and that thing will rattle the the doors upstairs rattle the windows when the bass gets going yeah I don't need to go to the theater for everything and especially I don't need to go to the movies go to the theater for character pieces you know small little intimate ca- character pieces uh, yeah but for big action, you know, big scene, panoramic, you get those huge vistas. I want to see yeah, that on right. the big screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's right. That, you, Top Gun 2. Top Gun 2 looks good. And even even if it's not good, I still want to go see it just because it's the nostalgia thing. Yeah, right? absolutely. We made our daughters watch uh, Top Gun. Yeah. <laughs> we, we make, when we have a family movie night, we make them watch a, a, an, a 80s, classic. an 80s or 90s movie. Mm-hmm. I just watched Speed the other day. I yeah. I would love to see Speed that's, that's on the movie one, yeah. Dennis Hopper. But Class. we even I even went to a couple right kind of at the I don't want to say at the beginning of the pandemic, but months ago before they did the hard shutdown, we went to a couple shows mm-hmm. too maybe. Mm-hmm. And both times we went, we were literally the only people in the theater. So yeah. it's pretty easy to social distance when you're the only yeah, three yeah. people in the entire theater. Right. I love it. So and this, you know, but it was just nice to get out, even though it wasn't a you know, community experience by any stretch of the imagination. It was literally sitting in my living room, except yeah. my living room was the movie theater. So no, it was no, no. Awesome. I was, I, but I want to get back to, like yeah. you're saying, I want to get back to the kind of more communal yeah. community experience, right? I, but, I will say I'm sadly, and I'm actually struggling with this right now. I might need therapy. I'm, I'm going to be turning 40 this year. Shut up. Poor kid. Yeah. In May, like right. And Children. I, I, what I told myself ages ago is for my 40th birthday, I want to rent out of certain movie theaters. Marcus had it at one point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where you can rent out and you can watch a few movies right. that you wanted. And I had three movies. I just wanted to, like, rent a couple of people. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to rent a couple rent of a friends. Couple of people. <laughs> <laughs> First, you got to find friends. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to rent those guys. Rent them. Yep, and I would rent out the theater, and like I would watch those back. To, I had my own like mini movie festival. Yeah. Now I'm thinking I had to delay it. So what movies do you rent? What movies do you have them play for your for your birthday? Empire Strikes Back. Okay. Blade Runner. Okay. And uh, oh gosh, it's tough. I don't know what the third one is yet. It depends. Like if I'm like sticking with the whole sci-fi, I might go Fifth Element. Those are three mm-hmm. solid choices. For I'm I'm you're, you're, I'm talking like it's worthy of the big screen. The sound mix is awesome. Like it's like Princess Bride. Uh, Princess Bride. Ooh, yeah, that fun. would be good. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, how about you, Todd? What what three movies are you putting in the theater? Th- well, they'd want to be. I'd want to pick fun movies, not like super yeah super depressing serious movies. Like you talk about Nolan, like Interstellar is one of my favorites. Yeah, but that's a little too heavy. I think. For yeah, it's a little slow paced, right? Festival fun birthday right, party right, right, kind right. of thing. You need something a little bit more upbeat. Uh, something a little bit more. Something a little bit more upbeat. Um, gosh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, something like Fifth Element is a good is a good mm-hmm. call. Um, I would say Lord of the Rings, but I can't just watch a Lord of the Rings <laughs> yeah, movie. Yeah, I know. If I watch one, then I have to watch all of them. All, so all six? I, I couldn't do... To a 12-hour marathon. I couldn't do, <laughs> I couldn't do that. Uh, that would be that would be no fun. I mean, I think... I, Indiana Jones? I think Wrath oh, of Khan is probably on my Ooh. list. Wrath of Khan, yeah. That'd be great. That's, that's a good I, one. I mean, you can just do the best ones, right? So you could do... Two, four, six? You could do Wrath of Khan. You could do... First Contact. Aliens. I mean, I'm talking oh, about just, just yeah, the aliens. classic movies, right? So yeah, absolutely. Wrath of on aliens and like the thing or something like oh, that. Oh, that Terminator Two Ter- or Terminator Two interchangeably. Ooh, right, do like do it do a John Carpenter night. So you do Big yes. Trouble in Little China, there the thing. Go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Big Trouble in Little China might 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 eclipse. I, I absolutely love that film. So so what's fun is my you know my you know our kids are the same age and 
Joey is actually showing more and more interest in some of the more grown up stuff and some of the more tragic stuff. Mm -hmm. He's actually just started watching Game of Thrones. We're about halfway through season two at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, So we just watched Rambo. First Blood, oh, yeah. the very first and one. I'm shocked how many people realize how little action there is until the end. Yeah, that, yeah that, and, and even then, it's not an the action film. It, it's, right, not. it's not. Yeah. Now, Rambo: First Blood Part Two. Oh, that yeah. one's a fucking bloodbath. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. and that. Do we get to win this time, yeah, sir? Right. I, 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 Him versus the Soviets. Yeah. No, the no, second that's, one that's, is that's Vietnamese. The third, yeah, third yeah. one no, is I know, the Soviets. Like, that third one is completely off the hook. Oh, it is. Yeah. I, I still haven't watched the fourth one where he turns the fifty cal on the guy inside the cab of the truck. It, it, nice. it wasn't bad. The 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 fifth one is the terrible one. Really, the Mexican. Yeah, cartel. Well, it's like it's like watching uh, Rocky Balboa and then turning, which was just awful. But then turning around and watching Creed, which was spectacular. Rocky Balboa wasn't bad at the time, but then when you watch Creed and then you go, oh, yep, no. hey, he's a better like. Uh, a, this is the better use of his character. Right. No, oh, absolutely. absolutely. Ab- have you seen Creed? No. Nope. Oh, I'll loan it to you if you want. It's fantastic. I got the internet. Okay. I'll watch so. it on the internet. Uh, you can do that. That's a wonderful thing about streaming. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, he's 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 getting more. The thing that, that he he's becoming more and more open to me suggesting things. For the last couple of years, he's pissed me off because I'll <laughs> say, hey, we should watch this movie. Oh, well, but then the nostalgia critic on YouTube tells him, "Oh, hey, yeah, this is good." This Somebody is else good. Said, he's like, yeah, exactly. "Hey, Dad, I want to kind of—I've heard about this movie. Have you ever heard of this?" Well, Anybody you should make him—you you should make him a deal. Like yeah. you've watched all the Cabbage Guy episodes of Avatar. So I've watched he watches all of this. I, I, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like right. a tip for tat thing, as opposed to uh, no more YouTube out of you, young man. <laughs> well, he he has gotten more and more open to trying new things, which is good. I'm like, it only took him 17 damn years to start listening to his dad, right? You know, yeah. when it comes to this stuff, I'm like, you know, I know you, kid. You are my clone. Yeah. I know you're gonna like these things. The one, the movie that's been on our docket for a while that I haven't, I haven't quite been able to get them to pull the trigger yet is the Last Starfighter. Oh yeah. Ooh. So I want that to be a good, that'd be a good family movie night. Yep. Well, Gary Whitta, by the way, is working with the original. Like they, they've had this. It's like right. you know, in Hollywood development. Yeah, right. right. And obviously, COVID has not helped. But they're trying to make a legit sequel right. to it. Yeah. And. I loved Robert Preston in I that know, movie. Yeah, yeah. So good. the the car dealer, or car. Uh, Robert the, Preston, the the driver, right? He's the he's the guy that recruits the, him. Yeah, but he he, uh, what what was his Earth persona? The like he he's, he was the he, voice driving, on the video game. Thirty five years since I've seen it, so I'm not sure. No, I, he drives him the car and he pretends to be someone and then he tells him the whole spiel. So anyhow. I have to rewatch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's why it's on the docket. <laughs> yeah, but um, the CGI and stuff is like actually pretty good. I think it holds up pretty nicely. I think. I think the next one I want to introduce him to is Enemy Mine because that one's yeah. out there right now. Yeah. Louis Gossi Jr. Baby, he could do no wrong. I, I'm not kidding when I say show your son a double feature of Enemy Mine and Iron Eagle. <laughs> that's Iron Eagle. yeah. That's I I that uh, ignore two three four. The, yes, well, there are. Yeah, I know. But the the soundtrack alone on Iron Eagle, well, mixed I, with Robert Downey, or sorry, not, with Louis Gossett Jr. Right. is fantastic. Well, and then you can t- I can always tie that back into Cobra Kai. Yes, you could. You know, he's like he does the. Well, he not only is one of the uh, members of Cobra Kai in the movie. Yep. Um, but uh, he references Iron Eagle uh, in Cobra Kai. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Have you watched Any Cobra uh, Kai? The first couple episodes, we haven't gotten past that yet. Okay. So oh. It kind of fell off the radar for a while. So. Yeah, go go to it, 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 that, that is a that is a pure nostalgia right, trip. Yeah. It really is. Yep. we got hooked on it because I've got um, I've had uh, YouTube. I've been subscribed to Google Music for my music for my yeah. music subscription. So all of a sudden they're like, you get YouTube premium with this too. That means you've got it. So it's like, okay, I get commercial free YouTube, which I kind of, I, I'm not going to lie. I dig right. that. And then they're like, well, yeah, you get all of our scripted programming too. So, uh, you know, three years ago, right. Cobra Kai, I'm like, yep. what is this? <laughs> William <laughs> Zabka, man, finally gets his turn oh. as more nuanced. Cause he's, oh, he was the quintessential eighties bad boy. Oh, he really was. Uh, just one bachelor of the guys. Party, just bachelor one of the guys. guys. Yep. He was the he was the the. He per- was the pretty 
blue eyed, blonde haired, like mm-hmm. er, like the protagonist had to hate him. <laughs> but uh, uh, go back to your original topic. I mentioned this briefly. I communal eating, like a dim sum place, or like a Korean barbecue, like like sushi station. Like sushi yes, station. even sushi station would be I, worth it. I would. No, enjoy. it's not that it's worth it. It's like how how do you have a restaurant with a with a a conveyor belt yes. of food Where that everyone food? can breathe on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've ordered, and the kids are like touching it, and the mom's like, yeah. "Put no. that back." The, the worst part is, you know, because the kids still want sushi. Uh, right. My wife doesn't eat it. The kids and I eat it. We still want it from time to time. Yeah, uh, we ordered it a few times. So the hard thing is knowing how much to order. Mm-hmm. Because oh, when, you're sitting, when you're sitting there on the conveyor boil, you, just eat, until you're you full. just eat until you're full and you stop. But it's like, okay, so how many California rolls? How many tuna rolls? How many? Okay. And you want what, Joe? You want what? Okay, you want the bus day. And all of a sudden it's like, uh, you know, you you submit the you look at the order. It's like that's eighty five dollars worth of sushi. Right? No. <laughs> so let's take some of this off. Right. The first time we did, we actually ordered eighty dollars worth of sushi, and I was like, uh, and then you know, by the time we're done eating, we still had a third of the tray left. I'm like, ah, uh, we might have overdone we that. Might have overdone it. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we usually do it. We usually under estimate and then we're all hungry so then we eat dinner it's right. like we have, we have sushi and then we eat dinner yeah it's an antipasto right. yeah um but i you know when it comes to that um there's the I, the sushi cafe over it, instead of going north on really yeah. you go south it's a little mom and pop family run sushi joint that is so good that's where you go when you want a bento box or you know you want yeah, the something really like really sushi good station same idea like it's good mm-hmm. for lunch i we yeah. went to sushi cafe one time and we were not a fan so we never really we never went back i've been to sushi station you know a dozen times for lunch but it like that's not i would not do that for dinner generally speaking but if you want good sushi um Sushi Ya was really good. I don't know if they're even still around anymore. Uh, uh, and then what's the, the one over by the store in Schaumburg? I always forget the name of it. Oh, oh. It's on Roselle Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. talking about Use Mandarin? That's my place. No. It's not sushi, but that's Jiren the place I Jiren over here is pretty decent, Jiren too. Jiren is very good. Uh, yeah. it's pri- that's pricier, though. Has anyone, like, it's funny, like, has anyone ever tried the, the sushi at Caputo's? And I'm only saying that because you actually see somebody make it. Yeah, gas station sushi. No, it's not. Oh, yeah. It's no, actually it, it, it's 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 above gas station Walmart sushi, sushi. <laughs> but it's below. Same thing. Like, that you, it's the same thing you get at sushi station. It's fine. Yeah, as exactly. As, it, as long as you eat it, right? Don't uh, don't get it and put it in your fridge for five days. No, I've seen that YouTube oh. video. Don't do that. Oh, no. My my sisters actually bought gas station sushi. I'm like, what? What the hell? You know, the one that's got the little green the green plastic yeah, grass. Green plastic like, grass. Like, yeah. I think no. I've never even gotten a gas station hot dog. Oh, I, I, oh, I, I eat gas station shitty food all the time. It's, oh, corn nuts. That's yeah, my kryptonite. No, 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 no. I'm talking uh, like, tornadoes. You know, they they sit on the the rollers there. Oh. They're 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 little t- they're they're taquitos. Yeah, with floofier kind of tortillas. Mm. Uh, I'll eat those. I've done hot dogs. I've done their like the 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 brats that you. It's just sitting on a roller. Yeah, okay. You don't get the one that looks like it's turned into a raisin. <laughs> Don't get that one. No, you leave that one go. Uh, the worst part about those are the buns because <laughs> either they leave them in the steamer way too long and they've turned to mush, or they don't warm them at all and they they leave them out and they're all crusty and. Well, you really. Uh, this is the gas station talk. Really selling it hard, Tony. Yeah, I, I eat there all the time. It's great. Here's all the things that are. No, wrong I know. No, 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 no. I <laughs> never said it was great. That's you're putting words in my mouth. Don't do that. <laughs> That's great. I said I eat there. I never said, said it was great. Do it. No, I didn't say that either. <laughs> I, 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 I will say though the the gaming community, uh, like I think Tony and I have done pretty well. Like when we go to conventions, yeah, or like even to your game store, like. There are things to eat. Like, you don't have to eat junk right. when you're gaming. I think that's the stereotype that, like, needs to hit the road. Well, the thing is, it's it's convenient. You know, well, eating no, no, crap there's is convenience because, like, uh, obviously, Gragnards and, like, Games Plus and stuff, they always stock, you know, the energy drinks, water, like, yeah. but pop, even, and, like, some chips and, and like, candy bars. But even so, if you, if you think about it, we're, we're, we're gaming for the afternoon there at the store. You're either looking at having pizza delivered or Jimmy John's delivered or... Well, the stores that are smart enough, they do do that, yeah. or they have partners nearby that they said, here's some menus. Right. Right? 
Yeah. Because, like, a game store can't have, like, a full kitchen in the back. Right. And well, they could, but well, there's a lot of <laughs> extra But then you're licensing. not a game store. You're a, ki- you're a kitchen with a game store in front of you. And, and then you got to deal with food licensing. Yeah, exactly. And so <laughs> and health inspectors. Yeah. And, and so you ha- it has to, like, that's all we can really carry. And we've tried to carry healthier options. Oh, yeah. And they, they go bad. Them. Yeah, no debate. No, I, I, I don't I, even I, mean healthy. I no, just but mean what healthier. I'm saying right, is, like, right. we'll go to a convention. And we won't eat like the the shitty food at Gen Con. Right. We'll wait, and then we'll go <coughs> and out. And we'll oh, go to a absolutely. Nice place to eat. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I I usually have one quick meal at Gen Con, and then I will eat yeah. a sensible dinner. Although there was the Gen Con that uh, my buddy Jeff, I you've met him years and years ago. I don't think you've ever met him. Um, he and I we we roomed together for Gen Con. Uh, back in 2006, maybe. And that was the year that we ate five times at Steak and Shake. <laughs> and wow. not only that, the boy is lactose intolerant. And he kept getting shakes. And oh, gosh. so he got the shakes. Jeff is a very smart man. It's just, it's like, you know, it's like convenience factor. Yeah, we'll go to Steak and Shake and I'll get the chili five ways and a milkshake. This lactose, nice. you know, this lactose and did, did he pop a pill and think that or like he just went for it? No, he he laid he ended up laying himself up for two days after Gen Con. Oh mm-hmm. gosh, Con crud. Yeah, he's just like yeah. oh, he gave himself Con crud though. He didn't catch it from somebody else. No, he it, no, no. He, he gave it to himself. He absolutely yeah. did. Um, but yeah, no, you can you can find ways to eat sensibly. Gen Con has gotten better, especially since they've got the, the food, food trucks. trucks has made yeah, it if you better. Can, if if you can get. Food from one of them. Right. Usually, there's yeah. lines are 15 people deep. Right. The, the the food truck thing has gotten a little cuckoo sometimes too, because like Chicago, obviously downtown, they had all these food trucks, but like I feel like uh, they they've gotten to the point where they make like extreme ex- extravagant meals. Like, well, I I, I want to get like an um an Italian sausage with peppers. Yeah, and some Everybody fries out of them. To be fancy, so to differentiate themselves, right? Yeah, so they yeah. charge you nine dollars for a sandwich. Yeah. Exactly. If you're lucky. Yeah. Well, Chicago's a different beast because the the rules in Chicago they can't they cannot cook any of the food on the truck. Well, yeah, exactly. So, so they have to prep. They have to cook everything, and it yeah. all just stays in warmer bins so they can slap it together. That's good for you as the consumer because it's, faster. it's, it's so faster. much faster than being cooked on demand. I, I had uh, the this amazing Jama- Jamaican jerk chicken out of the I knew the Jamaican jerk truck when always going to be on Monroe <laughs> at a certain yeah. time I was like done but that's a whole different ball of wax like you're saying Andy you're, you're waiting if you are sitting there in line 15 deep and you have uh, like a 1 o'clock call time somewhere and it's noon good luck well, no, you know, when it when it's that busy, the other nice thing about being downtown Indianapolis, where it is, is you can you can walk to the Ram. Yeah. You can, and, and the Ram, while yes, it's busy, they're staffed for it. Right. Yes. So you get in and out. I, I mean, course. I've been in in and out of the Ram in twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, I sat down, I placed my order. You know, okay, yep, place my order. Yeah. I'm sitting there like oh, I'll check on the. Is that my appetizer? What? Mm-hmm. Um, and there are so many options around the convention center. You don't have to eat the food trucks, and you don't have to. You have options, and that's one of the nice things. Right. Whereas with Adepticon, you got to kind of you know you've got to leave the the hotel. Yeah, now it's not far. You can get no. to Kuma's is like a mile away. Yeah. There's lots of stuff. Very, I mean, it's in Schaumburg, right? Schaumburg right. center of the universe. So there's all kinds of stuff right there. <laughs> the biggest problem with that convention is that you have to leave because then you might not get a parking spot. Right. Back, yeah. So. That that's, is. That's really the only problem. That's yeah. why Uber. What? Well, yeah, call that Uber. Yeah, you can Uber. <laughs> oh Spend gosh. ten bucks to go to Kuma's. It might be worth it to not have. Well, to don't say the keyword. We gotta. <laughs> gotta <laughs> keep the population low. Oh no! I tell okay. everybody about. That's I know you place. do. You blabber mouth. When it, whenever anyone comes to town, it's like you I want the best burger it. you've ever yeah. had. Let's go to Kuma's. Yeah, they're pretty good. I've only been there a couple times, but it's pretty good. So. So good. What else are we looking forward to? Anything? Uh, mm-hmm. Communal eating, mm-hmm. conventions, playing mm-hmm. games with my friends, movie theaters, movie, movie theaters. theaters. Um, I mean, I don't miss shopping. I actually hate shopping. Amazon has loved me the last year. That is well, for damn sure. Yeah, that's I know, but yeah, everything, right? Oh, they've got like is, stuff for the the house stuff, but I can't get certain like uh, specific things. And then I got to go to the actual store. My which, wife has I, discovered grocery grocery store. 
pickup services. Yep. So now she just orders everything online and comes yep. and picks it up. Are we talking like Instacart? Are we talking uh, Meyer? Uh, so Target just Meyer, created Target, a new company Walmart, called Ship. I'll do it now. Yeah. yeah. So. So she loves that. I actually enjoy food shopping. I'm kind of, I, I kind of dig that. I get inspired by actually seeing the food because, yeah. like, sometimes I like we try to meal plan a whole week, mm-hmm. and I always like leave some wiggle room because it's like, oh, hey, those Brussels sprouts look yeah. better than those green beans. Right, right. gotta swap that out. Nope, nope. So in our house, everything. Is, my my wife is a planner. Everything is planned. The yep. meals are what the meals are. Yep. Um and. The difference is my wife is kind of in between you and your wife because she orders like the box goods and the staples and the canned goods and everything else. Sure. And then she'll go when she goes to pick it up, she will go and she will choose her own produce. She will choose, go to the deli and get her own meat. Right. And of then, course. Beyond that, if it if it's uh, just pack it, prepackaged stuff, yeah, she'll let them shop for it. Sure. sure. It's but, called shopping with your eyes. Yep. There's certain things like it's it's the interior of the store. The peripherals are where you actually have to pay attention. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My, my children have made it harder for me now. Both of them are basically, well, one is a declared vegetarian for a couple of years. Oh, yeah. really? The other one is now basically a vegetarian. Oh, so. if, if they, they go they, vegan, you disown them. No, no, no. But uh, We love them regardless of how silly they might act. That's fine. But uh, it just it gets a little harder to shop for them. It does. It's yeah. easy to shop, but then it's harder to know what to make that's yes. different all the time, right? You, one can only eat so many veggie burgers. So well, right. uh, so I guess my thing would be like, how, do they do they help cook too? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. So I, I think that helps in some it in does. some ways. Yeah, I I let my my diabetes numbers get a little bit out of control. <laughs> Well, my doctor retired. Okay? I, it's just how you say I know. it. I, I, mean, I know. Kind of... my, my doctor retired. He's got a life-threatening disease and you're laughing. And you're laughing at him. He's, he's him. not saying diabetes. He's saying diabetes. Diabetes. You got to pull out the Brimley. It's I'm just Wolf like... of Brimley and I have diabetes. Yeah. Yes, no, I'm um, sorry. That's okay. So uh, my doctor retired and uh, my last prescription ran out. So I've got to find a new doctor uh, closer to town. And I just, I haven't had the time to actually do it. So I've got one of my two diabetes medications. I still have stock on. So uh-huh. I've taken more of it. Yeah. But my eating didn't coincide with that. And I kind of <laughs> let my numbers slide. Yeah. So the last three weeks to a month, I've been essentially, I'm not saying that I'm on the keto diet or paleo, right. but I'm You're essentially- You're just trying to reduce the risk or I've cut out carbs. so many carbs, it's yeah. ridiculous. I noticed. I, I do um, the same thing you were doing, a bun, yeah, a burger, burger with without no a bun. bun. Yeah, and so, and the the, the tots, so, and, and God bless my wife, because the, the thing that I love about her is she is, she's making an effort to help me not die. <laughs> Seems like a good thing for your spouse. So, you and so if you come home and there's like a double cheeseburger and a baguette and stuff like that, then you know you're well. No, you're no, dying. she is starting. You know, she. <laughs> when she the three baconators you needed, honey. Yeah. Well, I've got my cholesterol medication for the baconators. I just have to. It's the buns I got to worry about. Nice. No, it's you know she hides the Oreos when she brings them into the house, <laughs> and then gets pissed off with one of the kids tips me off to location. She should just put them in the dishwasher. Hey. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna have to Man, tell her that it's, one. This is it's rough tonight. It's, rough. it's a rough crowd for you. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, I've started. I, you know, my carb, but she goes to the store and God bless. She's she's like, hey, I found these broccoli tots. Mm-hmm. Do you want to try them? And instead of and instead of potatoes, yeah, it's those, broccoli. Yeah. And I said, sure, I'll try it. Mm-hmm. It's you know, it's better than potato. And she brings it home, and then I take a closer look at it. It's not really much better than potato. No, because it's because, processed and manufactured. Well, they, they take the broccoli. It's like, okay, your main ingredients, broccoli, processed and rich wheat flour. I'm like, right. God damn it. Right. Yeah. I'm like, it's got 26 grams of carbs in six of these fucking things. <laughs> right. But you might as well just eat the potato. I might, at that Potatoes point. Potatoes better for it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. At it, that, that point. That's my favorite, like, with uh, what are the, the, the sugar substitutes. Oh, this is does not have artificial sugar. Like this uh, Tropicana 50 orange juice. Oh. I hate that shit. Yeah. It's super sweet. It's sweeter than normal stuff. Yes. And so they say on the thing, no artificial sweeteners. I'm like, you fuckers. Go on the back. Stevia. Stevia. It's a natural sweetener. Right. It is. There's the marketing term. Right. And they're doing the same thing to the broccoli patties. But here, well, here's the thing. Technically... Any sweetener is a natural sweetener because, I, I mean, even if you look yes. at, 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 you know, the 
uh, what you call it, the sweet and lows and the the you know, all of those yes, because same and saccharin. right yeah. because we can't just create those things wholesale out of nothing. They come from something in it's nature. All exactly. it's, all it's all a chemical. Well, and that's why organic produce. Guess what? All produce is organic. What you guys are actually saying when you're short term is like no additional um, preservatives and pesticides right. used in creating. But guess what? It, that broccoli that you're paying two dollars more, it's still organic as the other ninety nine cent broccoli. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I know what you're ending where, up. Uh, where are we? How did we get here? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking forward to not dying this year from <laughs> okay, diabetes. How about yeah, that? That's, 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 that's good, what I'm looking forward to. Come around this year. back to normal. Uh, yeah, it's but uh, yeah, I, I feel for you because you know trying. I, I just turned. To, I'm turning to riced cauliflower to replace yeah, rice. Yes, I really like actually. So, yeah, uh, it's actually. I made a rice cauliflower pizza yesterday. Mm. I did. Uh, I I just used it in stir fry this week. You know, instead of fried rice. Oh yeah, I it did, tastes good. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm like I. I literally had a bowl full of vegetables with some chicken in it because mm-hmm. it was like oh broccoli and peas and carrots and onions and chicken no nobody ever got fat eating fr- fruits and vegetables so uh, fruits you, you can fruit. it's uh, you can't yeah. get fat but it's got it can have sugar it's it can turn sugar. into sugar but yeah. but if that's all you ate was fruits and vegetables your diabetes would go away. yeah i mean you you, you won't get uh, scurvy <laughs> you, you can fast. I fast occasionally. I'll, I'll do a three day fast occasionally and straighten myself out. And oh, that, yeah. helps, that helps a lot. I used to do alternate day fasting. Uh, Michael Simon did that. Or intermittent fasting. Intermittent really fasting, where it's like 14 hours, 14, yeah. 15 hours. Yep. I, I really help, that really helped me get my weight under control. Yeah. yeah. I've really kind of stopped losing weight because I've, the post kind of recently in the pandemic i've right not as good as i should be well there's like a plateau there's certain things you change in behaviors will get you so far drinking beers is the thing right if i keep drinking alcohol for uh, for 10 days or more the weight really just starts to fall off of me but then i but then i have a few beers a few nights in a row and a few drinks here and there and, and not even you know really to excess but it's just then i do some of that and then so then I'll 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 be kind of naughty for a few weeks and then I'll do a three day fast yeah. and I won't eat anything zero calories for three full days and yeah guess what that's that certainly cleans out your system <laughs> and you really start back from scratch you lose about I don't know anywhere from seven to ten pounds and uh, so the nice thing is this out. this Guinness you know the carbs in this Guinness are less than a slice of bread right yeah so I can I, I can have this yeah well beer is food so that, it, it, there's okay. a sandwich in every that's, beer that's right. <laughs> Exactly. There's a sandwich. In there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm. I like that we, motto. That's a good motto. I'm gonna start telling my wife that. What do you? Um, you gonna have another beer? No, no. I'm gonna have another sandwich. Exactly. Well, you have a beer in your hand, right? There's a sandwich in every beer. That's right. Absolutely. I think you that's got you got beautiful. your you got your grains, yeah, your whole grains, good. and your malts, right. and, uh, and there's water in there. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Hydrating. It's fine. You know. <laughs> Anywho. Um, wow. Where do where does the time go? Anyway, so Friday night at the store, we're gonna do some more BattleTech. Yeah, I'm I'm good. All right. How's your BattleTech streaming right. going, guys? Um, we had someone. We, had, <laughs> we did it. It occurred. It, it did occur. Yeah. You know, we, it, the nice thing is, you know, we do we do get some bodies come in here and there. Um, mm-hmm. The thing is, Rob joins us to play BattleTech, so it's not like he, we he's not gonna be watching. on there. Like. We, we we had a few friends that have. They ch- come in and check yeah. it out, and then they yeah. kind of they don't sit there and watch us talk for four hours. Right? So, yeah, you know, I totally get that. That's fine. But mo- you know, I always take pictures and throw it up on the Facebook groups, and people appreciate just seeing or games again in the that store. People are playing right. games, you yeah. Know? And so I think that's that's a good thing. And I think once the once we get a little bit start getting vaccinated up and stuff, yeah. Um, you know, we'll get some more play. And, right. And, and uh, you know, obviously, we're doing it as an after hours kind of invite only. Right. Not really invite only, but. We're keeping the numbers down on purpose, right? right? It's not really... I think the most we've had in the store, even before you had to close it down again, the most we had was four in the store play, and we were at one end of the... And we were splitting tables then. Yeah, exactly. Um, and and you know I, I'll I'll say in answer to the to anyone who may say anything the store is closed traffic is controlled yeah. Todd and I you know we're you know we're sitting here we're already anyway, yeah. you know we're yeah. we are in, the three of us are in the same circle here mm. yeah you know, this is the circle well, of trust beyond this like Rob Rob was six feet away he was right. on the other side of the table from me and Todd mm-hmm. and right. now I have a suggestion cross. for next week okay why please. don't we like, because now we have all these fancy cameras. Yeah. Because we've been talking about it. Why don't we play either X-Wing or Destiny? Uh, 
I mean, we don't have to play it here. We can keep this as a podcast, but yeah. I'll come over one of the other days and we can start slowly putting our, our feet back into the uh, waters of gaming, gaming, which you've done. I, I, I'm absolutely happy to do that. Um, although I'm going to tell you, I, I'm at the point now where the shelf space that my destiny is taking up and I'm getting really, really frustrated because... Um, well, I'm about to tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I just engaging you. I'm, I'm giving you the okay to no, go further. So, so the, the continuing committees, when the Star Wars CCG game folded... Yes. The, know, yeah, so the people who are making more sets. Right. So now we're up to... Five groups making their own sets of cards for, for this game for for Destiny. CCG. Oh, Destiny. For Destiny. See, I'm not even aware of any of that stuff. So, well, and but the problem is, if I'm if we're gonna go, if we're gonna play beyond just you and me, okay, yeah. you know, people are going to be like, well, I because people are taking these PDFs, they're buying prints of their cards. Sure. There are there are so many legal trouble problems that these people are going to run into because they're taking stills from the movie, running them through some Photoshop filters. Well, and saying, it's fine and dandy Art. if they're just playing amongst their group. But are you saying like people? If the second you start selling them, that's when you run into. So the issues. problem is they are giving away the card designs. They're putting the PDFs out there absolutely sure. free, but then people take the PDFs somewhere and they're like, "Hey," which is still legally it's a gray area. No, but the problem is not. when you start selling. The problem, is, no, it, it, it's just, not a great. Just area. reproducing it and owning it is an issue, right? Yeah. And now you've got you've got come you've got someone who set themselves up a company to print dice. That's the problem right there. Right. That's the biggest one. And right now they're there. not making a huge. They're, they're, it I can't don't imagine, matter. But exactly, the house of mouse is gonna is gonna come Somebody down on. But regardless, get a cease and desist is all. Yeah. yeah, but regardless of any of that, like what's. I mean, what if we just play up until the legal no, thing? No, 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 You and I playing is fine. No, no, no. Well, I guess what I'm saying is why do we even care about this new these new sets? Even if as us players, like, are, are you you wanting to collect? Uh, do, do you feel that you need to collect these other things? If we go beyond you, me, and Travis. Okay. Okay. Beyond our core group. Yeah. If we start inviting anybody else in, they're going to want to be playing with that continuing stuff. Have, you know, that, really? Yeah. I promise you. Try and find a game of the Star Wars TCG, the Star Wars CCG, and say, hey, I don't want to play with any virtual cards. People are like, what? Are you stupid? What's, what, why, why don't you want to play what's with... What's wrong with you? Yeah. Why, what's wrong with see, the See, I can cards? see if people wanted to play it like on Tabletop Simulator, where it is easy to have like those virtual cards and stuff like right. that. These, but but see, that's the thing. If we're doing it, let's say we do it in store with uh, at uh, well, at then you have to say it's only with the FFG merch, and then people aren't. But people paid good money to have these cards produced and oh, these dice gosh. produced. I I'm with you. I, I but the the headache that it's causing online and that it's going to cause. How many times are gamers like have games that haven't been reprinted in like 10, 15 years? They come to the store. They want to hang out with their friends. You know they they pay their table fee sure. and they play. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm just saying I've got I've got a, between my other games that I have to actually play that are yeah uh, live engaging and people aren't going you know people aren't going crazy because my game is dead I have to produce more stuff I, I don't get that I'm like what you have so many damn cards to play with why do you need more stuff oh, Gosh mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but that's just me I hear you What do I know Like Magic if Magic stopped producing today. You oh my it. gosh! How many years of ma twenty-five years of Magic, Todd? More. So they've only pr printed about thirty thousand unique cards. <laughs> <Right>. Only, <laughs> only about thirty thousand. But you will get someone who will be like, "We need to produce more because right. I can do it better," and right. they can't do it better. No. Very, very rarely, gamers make terrible game designers. Yes. Do, do you do you want to know why I don't play Magic? You guys are gonna laugh because I'm the designer. It's because I look at those cards and I go, eee. "I want to see the art bigger. I want that there's too much text on the card." Like it's it's hilarious. No, but you gotta admit this game's old. I mean, so it's they kept the simple. same. It is timeless. Exactly. It is. Yes. You know, yes, you have a few. New I haven't played a game of Magic in probably twenty years, and I know that I could pick it up right now. You could tell me what a couple of the new keywords are, and I'd yeah. be able to because it's still the same. Hey, look, I need one forest and three of any color, and right. I can put out this. Two attack, yep. three defense creature. And that's the benefit of having a game with that longevity. Yeah, well, I mean it's it's the it's the creator, right? It created a genre of game effectively. Mm -hmm. and, right. Yeah. Um 
and the game itself is like you, Tony, is in the, and it's very basic. It is still the same. They did change a lot of the other rules, like a lot of the timing rules have changed. Sure. And of course, every set they have to come out with a new mechanic and, and keyword and things like that because that's what the game is. Right. That's how you keep people interested. That's how yeah. you get power creep. And, and so it's simple, and and the reason that it people love it so much beyond the art and beyond the, the challenge and beyond the deck building is that it is simultaneously a very easy and basic game at its core, but it's simultaneously... Yes. You know, dubbed the most complicated game ever created it's, by whatever it was, it, Newsweek magazine a year yeah, ago, whatever it, it was. Yeah, if you take a look, if, well, if because you, there are so many, because there have been 30,000 unique cards yep, printed, yes. the interactions between those cards are, un, there's a, an infinite number of combinations of cards, especially yeah. if you're playing the 100 card format. Well, the other thing is, I, I, I find like when, like kids, because uh, there's a lot of like 10 to 14. 15 year olds like they get into card games a lot especially with uh pokemon yeah. and a little bit of uh you know some it's other other long lasting there's game like right there pokemon there's cool. some lcg formats from ffg that some of the kids right. were playing and stuff I, I guess one of the things is like how to manage your money in collecting and finding that balance like that conversation sometimes needs to be happening with your kids yeah. like as you uh rate like you know what i'm saying sure yeah it's 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 trying to budget it, it, it it's yeah. but you know for your collecting because there's a lot of like magic cards that are super duper expensive yes that aren't those uh <laughs> power, the power nine. nine cards yes they're, they're and Duel they're wins. great to have yes but you could still have a lot of fun with like i guess what i'm trying to say is there's a lot of um conversations to be had with teenagers when you get into gaming in terms of like budgeting, even with like mini gaming and my plastic crack, like yeah. I had to set myself a certain limit. Like when I went to the store, this is how I would buy new things. I would buy like a new ship every time I went to the game store to expand my collection, but also to help the FLGS. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be how I kept growing. So if I went to the store twice a month, that would be, you know, like fifteen dollars a pack, thirty right. so thirty dollars a month, three hundred and sixty dollars a year, then you you yeah. put, you put yourself a limit on it. I still remember a conversation. I, I, I was at the local game store in Gurney Mills yeah. twenty two years ago now. <laughs> Uh, when po Pokemon was just, you know, it was just skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're talking first edition, you know, Team Rocket, those first couple of sets. Yep. And I still remember the conversation as I'm standing there waiting to, I, you know, I've got a, I've got a hundred dollar box of cards that I'm, that I'm looking to buy. And the kid, you know, kid comes in with his mom and is like, yeah, yeah, I need that. I need the Charizard. Okay. We'll go ahead and get that for you, Johnny. All right, and the guy rings in. That'll be you know, that'll be seventy five dollars. And the mom looks in, down and goes, "That'll be how much?" <laughs> right. And then she yeah. writes the check. I was like, "Oh, you're uh, gonna yeah. freak out!" Mm -hmm. But you're gonna turn around and write the check here's, anyway. Here's yeah. my money. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like you and trying to get that Batman comic when you were younger. That story. The. Uh, no, it wasn't. It wasn't Batman. It was uh, no. The, the the thing that the thing that my search was was the X rated C three PO card. Oh, from right. the original top set. Have I shown you that card? Have you seen this? The oh, golden rod. The golden rod. Yep. I would look at it and say, "Oh, that's really cool." Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, really I like. I don't really know what I'm looking at. So. Well, I, I, I can't. I don't have. An, it's not that I don't appreciate it because obviously I'm in kind of the I'm, right. I'm collectible adjacent, right? Obviously right. Yeah. Selling yeah. cards worth a lot of money, but. Even it's the cards that I sell where, that are worth a lot of money, I'm like, ah, okay, I don't know why that card's worth it's so much like, money. It, it, it's collectible. It's one of those things where, you know, if I if I had a because you do play Magic still, right. right? If I said, hey, I got a Mox Diamond, right? You know, I'll sell it to you for two grand. You're gonna go, ah, uh, no. Mm -hmm. But if I say, hey, I got a Mox Diamond, I'll give it to you for a hundred bucks. Would you jump on right, that right. as a pro, you know for your personal collection? Right. That's kind of what it was. There was this one card that I was chasing. It was the X. It was the X-rated C-3PO card. I chased it for five years pre-internet pre because That's I just funny. I found out that it existed and suddenly I had to have it. I had to have it. It's got to. It must be mine. I will make it mine. And I, you know, I bounced from. You know, I'd go to conventions. I'd go to shows. I'd go to stores. If they had it, it was overpriced. I would turn around and I'd say, No, thank you. I'm right. not paying you fifty bucks for that card. Seventy five bucks for that card. <laughs> Listen to previous podcasts, and you will find out Tony tracing the autograph. That's right. Um, 
<laughs> so yeah, eventually it. Did, but now the internet's taking all the fun out of it. Right, that. right. Yeah. It's like now, now it's like, can I be on eBay at just the right moment to happen to snipe that at the perfect price? God. Right, right. Uh, I, I actually have set, just bought stuff on eBay, which is funny, but I never do the bids. I either do buy like the now, buy it now. At all. Yeah, exactly. I that's, I, I'm the same way. If I want it, I'm going to go buy it. Like, I treat yes. eBay like a store. I don't treat it like an auction house. I'm like, yeah. If I want it and it's available well, and it's a good price, I'm just going to buy it. I'm not there gonna... there are, at game stores, awesome auctions sure, where yeah. you can go in person. That's a different kind no, of auction, well, and I'll so... do that once in a while, and the conventions have them. Right. You said Gen Con was a great example. Yeah. But, like, the eBay auctions, like, the time zones. Like, I'll go to bed at, like, 1130, and then I'll make a bid, and then you, you wake up at, like, 259 and somebody else i'm like that's just crazy shit Wait, well no. in the last dozen times i've ever bid on anything on ebay i've lost every single one of them by a dollar because somebody yeah, has just either bits. has the bot or the thing or they're doing it themselves right. or they've got 10 of them or however it works i don't even know how it works and i don't even care because <laughs> i'm not doing it anymore i'm just gonna buy i'm with it you now. todd yeah. it, it, for Stupid. me at all the, you know, I, i've jumped into into auctions i very rarely end up buying anything but it's like that's too good a damn price. It's yeah. I just, I never win them. Like, I never uh, won any yeah. of those auctions, right? The amount of effort to try and win one right. of those auctions right. Right. outweighs it, the cost. Because immediately eBay became the opposite of what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be set your best price and forget about it. And if you yep. win it, great. And if you don't, well, right. you give them your best price. It's, it was never supposed to be create a program or buy this third-party program that will watch your your bids for you and auto-bid uh, the minimum over your whatever. Yep. Like, that's not what it was supposed right. to be. Yeah. So, <laughs> screw you guys. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I like the, the Gen Con auction. Hold your right, ticket up exactly. in the air. One, two, three, four, five, six, exactly. seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. And as soon as, as soon as and, you... and what I alluded to, the best parts of those actions are people been going to Gen Con or the game stores for so many years that you can pick up stuff that isn't available on Amazon. Right. Oh, and man. that's that's the strength of those things. But the downside to that too is I end up I, I find myself like the auction store. So you got you got two things. You right. got the auction okay. and then you've got the auction store where people like you and me will bring their stuff and they'll set up instead of getting it auctioned off, I'll set three prices. I'll set my Thursday price, my Friday price, my final price. Got it. And as and each day it kind of drops down. And I found myself it's like do 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 Really? They're only asking $3 for these 3,000 Star Trek CCG <laughs> right. cards? Yeah. Well, I'll take that. Okay. You know, it's like, At that know, point, you I, should just trade it to somebody or give it to someone. <laughs> right. You, ta- you get it. They taped up the box. They so can't rifle through them. Right. Okay, so I'll take a flyer and see what I get. And you, you open the box and you get a whiff of mildew is the first thing that you smell. It's like, ah, oh, <laughs> damn hey, it. Hey, don't, 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 don't mock those, uh, the yellowing paper book. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Smell? Oh, mm-hmm. I still love that. No, no, no. Yeah, I, no, no, I, not yellowing paper book. Actual mildew. <laughs> but we're talking black mold here. We're ta- oh. We're, ta- <laughs> we're talking about miner's lung here. Uh, don't, don't breathe that. What about those uh, lead-painted minis? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll be fine as long as you don't chew on them. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> why so I always tell people, well, they're made of lead. Well, don't chew on them. You'll be fine. Are you chewing on your lead minis? What is the issue? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I want to strip the lead paint off of my lead minis. Should Please, I use a don't wi- eat it. Don't I, lick it off. You'll be fine. Should I use a wire brush on oh that? <laughs> yes, please. Oh, oh, in, in, inhale God. deeply as you do hey, so. Hey, I, I, I oh. base these miniatures on a layer of asbestos. Is that? Oh, my okay. gosh. Please chew these lead chips, uh, paint, <laughs> these paint chips as you do that. Uh, lick the walls. Lick anyway. The walls. So, this is what we've been looking forward to for the rest of the year. Right. I mean, we answered the question pretty we well, and we just segued. So, Joey, definitely, he, he absolutely wants to do a uh, uh, Avatar last uh, last the Airbender. Review? Jesus. He wants to do a retrospective okay. of it. If you guys are down for it, i got to go buy yeah. another camera so I can set it up so he can... Ha- I need a camera and I need a microphone stand. Just so. tell him to come sit, stand behind you. He's like, I don't want him that close to me. <laughs> <laughs> He's a teenager. He smells funny. <laughs> <laughs> smells funny. Just tell him no funny voices. I, I don't think that's going to work. Oh. No, actually, he'll be fine. But if you try and tell him that for D and D, he'll uh, he'll I, get that. I'm d- okay with it for D and D. It's not a prerequisite. No, it's not a prerequisite. <laughs> no, uh, it, it all it, for me. It depends on the character and what I'm trying the, what I'm trying to put across. No, um, yeah. 
sometimes if you're doing a little heavy role playing, you can put a little put a little accent into things. You know what I mean? You, yeah. all, all your dwarves can be Scotsmen. All your dwarves are Scottish. You're grumpy and. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The stereotypes. Well, yeah. they they are grumpy. They're dwarves. I understand that. Yeah. So you'd be grumpy but, too. But what about Speaking a happy which, dwarf? Speaking of which, I got to show you the models that I got from you. That I, I assembled oh, them all, okay. including that that right. Kings of War one. Well, are we we about done here. I think we're about done here. All right. Sounds good. All right. So join us Friday night for BattleTech. Monday night we're going to be painting. I'll show off the last thing that I find. I, I finished up the A wing. Uh, oh, I saw some pictures. I'll, yeah. I'll show you that. And we'll get to work on the next piece. Not sure what it'll be yet, but we'll see. So uh, I'm Tony. I'm Pasquale. I'm Grognard Todd. And you've had us monologuing. Thanks for joining us tonight, guys. Thanks, Kane.